Okay, good morning everyone. Can I welcome everyone to this meeting of Development Control Committee A at Mid Suffolk District Council. Um, can I just run through some of the domestic arrangements before we make a start? Can I ask you please to ensure that microphones are turned off when not in use? Uh, please do not interrupt other speakers or hold separate conversations while the meeting is in progress. If you are attending the meeting to speak and persistently interrupt the meeting, you may be asked to leave. And can I ask everyone just to double check mobiles are on silent or switched off? And also, could I ask you to turn the volume down? We just heard it then on laptops uh, so that we don't have pinging of messages every time they come in, please. Um, we will be using e-voting for members that are able to. Unfortunately, I have a new laptop and it's not downloaded properly. But if you have got e-voting, uh, we will be using e-voting. Uh, so if you could just make sure you're logged on to the app, please. I'd like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewings. The whole of the meeting will be recorded except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you'll be deemed by the council to have consented to being recorded. And by entering the meeting as a speaker, you're also consenting to being recorded by the council and to the possible use of those sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not lawfully excluded. If we do hear the fire alarm sound today, please can you leave the building immediately by the fire exit and make, our, uh, make your way to the assembly point at Ipswich Town Football Club. Follow the signs directing you to the fire exit at each end of the floor and please do not enter the atrium, the ground floor area and walkways. If you're in the atrium when the alarm sounds, please follow the signs to the nearest fire exit. Please use stairs and please do not use the lifts. And please do not re-enter until we're told it is safe to do so. Good. Okay, so we'll now just run through um, who's in the room, just for the benefit of members of the public who may not have been to a planning meeting before. Uh, so we have, uh, on my left, uh, we have uh, five ward members and myself, uh, elected members, who will make a decision on the applications before us today. Um, in Mid-Suffolk, uh, a local member may speak on an application but may not vote. Um, we also have uh, some other ward members present uh, who will come forward at various times, Councillor Geek and Councillor Muller, who will be called, and Councillor uh, Carter as well, who will, will call to come forward for applications in their wards. Uh, and then case officers will come forward uh, during the meeting, and we have Philip Isbell Gemma Walker in to prayers, Alex Scott, uh, Avril Goody, and then to support the meeting, uh, and then most importantly, either side of me, we have the people that make the meeting tick over and run. So thanks everyone for your support today. First item on the agenda is apologies for absence and substitutions. Do we have any, please? Thank you, Chair. We have apologies from Councillor Rick Mayer, Councillor Barry Humphreys, and Councillor Sarah Mansell. Councillor Wellham is substituting for Sarah Mansell. Thanks. I know a couple of those uh, found out this last night that one of them particularly has picked up COVID, so um, couldn't be here at such short notice, and the other phoned in sick this morning. So apologies, we couldn't get substitutions, which is what we'd normally try and do. Okay, do we need to receive any declarations of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest by members? Yes, Councillor Eva. Um, thank you, Chair. Yes, on, on item seven, um, a, which is um, the Elmsdale one in Bloor Homes, and my brother works for Bloor Homes. Councillor Miller. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, I'd like to report I am Vice Chair of Stone Market Town Council Planning Committee, and when this item was brought before the committee, I left the room and took no part in the debate or the vote, and I'm also a director of Cedars Park Art. Thank, thank you, Chair. You. Okay, um, thank you for those. Any deck? Ah, oh, sorry, Councillor Wellen. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm County Councillor for the, the division which includes Cedars Park. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, declarations of lobbying. I've been lobbied on the Bloor Homes. Something came in the post uh, yesterday. Um, anyone else? Yeah, that's all of us on the committee. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any declarations of personal site visit by members? That's none. Oh, yep, Councillor Eben. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll do it 
Okay, we're now going to move to the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 4th of May. Uh, that's in our papers. Um, we start on page 5 and run through to page 9. Is everyone happy that I sign those as a true record? Oh, sorry, we have to have an electronic vote. Sorry. Yes. Do you point, yeah, point on, uh, on page 7, um, uh, uh, 164.5 and effectively 164.7, I did think that the given that all, all seven members of the committee expressed their particular disappointment regarding the, 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 um, the estate being connected to the gas grid, um, that really that should have actually come through explicitly in the minutes. Um, so I don't know what other people think, but I, I did, um, I did, that did strike me that, that that didn't get minuted, but it was a pretty central point of the discussion, actually. Okay, can I suggest what we do is let's not sign them off. Let's just go back and just listen to the tape and just see if there's something that, just double check what was said and get, put that in and bring it back. Yeah, Councillor Eburn. Chair, we could just say, because it's got proposed heating systems, we could put proposed heating systems, especially the gas grid, regarding the gas grid after proposed heating systems. I'm happy with that. Which, which then is, is everyone is else done. happy? Okay, so on that basis, are we happy to go to a vote? Yes. Yeah, proposed by Councillor Passmore, seconded by Councillor Eburn. We'll now go to an electronic vote. Thank you, members. That vote is now in progress. Thank you, Chair. That's five votes for and one abstention. That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we now need to move on to uh, notifications of petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme. Are there any received? None received, Chair. Okay. So we're going to move now on to the schedule of the planning applications. I'm just going to do the order slightly differently. I'm going to do 7C first, and then go to 7A and 7B. So we're going to start off with 7C, uh, which is in our papers on page uh, 217. And now I'll hand over to the case officer, Avril Goody. Thank you, Chair. Hello, members. So the application before you today is located at the intersection of Gun Cotton Way and Linnet Drive in Stowe Market. And the proposal is full planning application for two art displays. So this is the location. You've got Gun Cotton Way running west to east along here and Linnet Drive north to south. So there's two locations. You have A, which is central within this roundabout, which is proposed for the main artwork. And then you have B on the highways verge to the northeast, which is proposed for the information board. <clears throat> so there's the aerial map there. You can see you've got Cedars Park Estate to the north, and <clears throat> the land to the south there is currently under construction. And then just some wider context. Obviously, you've got Tesco's um, to the northeast. Um, cedars to the north and then some more commercial units further to the, the west there. And then in terms of constraints, so that there isn't any particular constraints on the site, you can just see there that the orange denotes the speed limit, which is 30 miles an hour. And in terms of the artwork proposed, so this is the main artwork, the one that's proposed uh, to be located centrally on the roundabout. So the design is six birds above a plough. It's proposed to be 3.5 metres high and uh, 1.5 metres wide. Um, the materials are proposed as steel um, and it will be located on a concrete plinth which is going to be 1.6 metres high and two metres wide. And then this is the information board. 
So that's proposed to be 0 0.8 metres high um, and located yeah, on the grass verge um, adjacent to that roundabout. And again, the materials will be steel. Just in terms of some photographs here, you've got um, facing towards, uh, it's kind of southeast towards the roundabout, you can see um, here um, on Gun Cotton Way. And then a slightly zoomed in version. <clears throat> you can see the roundabout has um, some hedging and then the chevrons um, there. And then facing northwest this time, so the opposite direction, you've got the roundabout there and then you can see the grass verge where the information board is proposed. And again, just that is the location for the information board. And just a slightly closer um, photo of the roundabout. And then a photo looking um, south on Linnet Drive. Um, Again, you can see the hedge and the, the chevrons there. Um, just to say, we have received some additional comments from the Highways Authority, just providing some additional um, reasoning behind their initial comments, and they can be found in your table papers. So the recommendation is for approval, uh, subject to conditions, as set out in, um, on page 20, 222 of the bundle. Thank you. Can you just run through the additional highways points? Uh, yes, I can. So, um, in their um, initial comments, um, they concluded that the, um, the proposal wasn't considered to have a significant impact on highway safety. Um, so, they have just... We asked for some further details on why that, that was their conclusion. And ultimately, they kind of considered that the roundabout is oval shaped so um, the, the, prob the existing kind of concerns probably relate to that shape and the fact it does allow for users of the highway to take that roundabout at slightly higher speeds than may be desired. Um, so essentially having the hedge and the chevrons there it wants to make people slow down. You don't want to be able to see across the roundabout, so it makes drivers yeah, slow down. So essentially, they've concluded that um, having the artwork centrally in the roundabout is not likely to cause any further obstruction that, than already is experienced, and it's not going to reduce the visibility to drivers that are on the roundabout or waiting to join. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? Any other questions? Yeah, Councillor Wellen. Yeah, thank you. I, I couldn't see precisely how far back from the edge of the road the information board is meant to is meant to be. And also, if somebody wanted to go close to it, I mean, it's got some wording on, but people might think, well, I ought to go and have a look at that. How do they? How do they actually get there? Presumably, they walk round the hedge, and then they're standing on the verge. I believe it'll be in, in front of that hedge on the, on the um, verge, so they'll just walk across the grass um, onto it and it'll have, um, I believe, kind of some etchings on it and a QR code that people can scan to... Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm in danger of making a statement rather than asking a question. Um, if, if somebody wanted to do that, would it not be better if they didn't have to get onto the verge, if they could do that from that, the other side of the hedge, so to speak? From the pavement? Yeah. Let's ask the applicant when, or the okay, board member when we come to that, maybe. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. No, not <laughs> now, it's not now, it's when we, oh, when we come to you. No problem. Okay, okay mm -hmm. any other questions? No, nope. okay, so we're going to move on. Um, okay, so uh, we don't have anyone from the town council, but we have, first of all, an objector, Bob Cracknell. Uh, you have three minutes to speak, and we have a timer here, and would ask that you keep to the three minutes, please, and over to you when you're ready. Thank, thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Bob Cracknell. I've lived on Cedars Park in Stone Market for 19 years. 
The submitted objections universally highlight the chosen location is inappropriate. Whilst the choice of artwork was put to a public vote, the location was not. The roundabout in question is the only oval-shaped one out of five along Guncutton Way. Whether planned or not, this promotes a faster speed of entry and exit for traffic along Guncotton Way from the direction of the town centre. The issue with the existing layout is most apparent when approaching the roundabout intending to turn right into Linnet Drive. It's well documented in, in objectors' comments. The common thread amongst supporters' comments is that the artwork would be nice to look at and would add a feeling of enrichment. If that is true, then it would apply wherever it was situated. If art is to be enjoyed by looking at it, then it's clearly at odds with safe, attentive driving. There is no compelling argument for this location to be considered essential. One comment I have seen speaks of a reduced risk of vandalism. Is that more important than road safety? I've spoken personally with a commission blacksmith who's told me that it could be located anywhere. 25 locations were considered, but the project manager has refused to disclose them. Interestingly, the addresses of supporters would suggest that Linnet Drive is not their routine entry point for the estate, hence they may have little appreciation of the situation I've tried to convey. I was advised to email photographs to you in advance to try and illustrate this, as I was told I would not be able to introduce them today. To construct a 16-foot tall ironwork on this roundabout with the wide side facing traffic on Guncotton Way would further hamper visibility across the roundabout, including HGV traffic travelling from the Tomo Industrial Estate. I defy, anyone using this, I defy anyone to use this junction on a motorcycle and tell me they feel safe doing so. The project manager has dismissed objectors' comments regards visibility and refused to enter into discussion or meeting at the proposed location where opposing views could be explained or understood. I would all venture that such a significant number of supporting comments for a planning application is not the norm. A cynical person might think there's been a deliberate effort to negate objectors' comments. As such, this is hardly a community project. Which community is it representing? It is within your gift, and I would urge you to conduct your own site visit to understand the issue. I repeat, the issue is turning right into Linnet Drive. It's also important to recognise the issue will duplicate once the housing development opposite Linnet Drive is complete. If you are not minded to conduct a site visit, I would ask that you take time to consider the public comments in full before any decision is made, as so much context has been lost in the summaries. From the associated papers, I note the highways officer's comment that it is not desirable to have through roundabout visibility as it encourages higher speeds. That is certainly not the case at the moment, yet this proposal would make a poor situation far worse for no justifiable gain. Whilst the police may not have any reports of serious injury or fatal accidents at this location, everyday near misses and damage only collisions are not reported. The three minutes are up, so the last sentence, please. This artwork can go anywhere. Lives are more important than that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions for the objector? No? Okay, thank you for that. Um, we now move on to a supporter, Jenny Davison, and again, oh, sorry, the applicant, my fault, uh, Jenny Davison, the applicant, and again, you have three minutes. Over to you, please. Thank you for um, <clears throat> inviting me today. I, I'm speaking on behalf of the community who has, uh, through three councillors who are responsible for our ward, and the entire committee of Cedars Park Residents Association, who worked for some 10 years towards actually, it's 10 years from today, to get uh, a work of art on, on Cedars Park, which uh, in their minds was a bit of a replacement for one that never did get erected in the, um, in the precinct, which was planned and superseded by Cedars House. We had a, a question earlier, which I ought to quickly cover, Fortunately, I've got the notes in front of me. The, the verge around the hedging in the centre of the roundabout is three metres wide. So uh, I wouldn't encourage anybody to go wandering uh, across that roundabout. Uh, the plan for the bollard is to have a minimum amount of information, but a link to the council website, which explains all about it, and a QR code as well, so that anybody that's got a smartphone can, can access that. Um, there's no real intention for people to get close to the work of art. It's elevated, it's in the middle of a lot of hedging. Um, it's, it's designed to be viewed from a distance. So um, I would say that <laughs> I, can't, I can't claim that there's no risk for people getting across to the roundabout, but, uh, but that's the case. 
Uh, with regard to location, um, we started this in November. I've got some correspondence here, which was, was with highways back to the very beginning of November 2021. We, we tried from the start. I rung the police to, to, to check as to whether they've got a view uh, on, on past accidents. I've searched in the press uh, and so on. So I don't think we've in any way been negligent. And every step that I've taken along the way um, has been in, in communicated fully, partially through Dave Muller, partly, uh, partly through meetings that I've attended and so on. So I think it's, nothing's been done in secret. But what I can't do is, is deal with in individuals who've got a different view. And, and I would like to thank Avril for the absolutely superb summary that you put together. I, I, I've already made comments back to some of your colleagues about that, Avril, so thank you. So I think you've covered it very, very well. I don't need to go into the details of the planning application. What I do need to do is to communicate to you that this is a community project. People have been put a lot of time and effort into this. And what I don't want to do is to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. And I think, I think it's a worthwhile project. And, and I've had a lot of support. I've had people stop their cars and, and thank me for what I'm doing. I've had people write to me to thank uh, to, to say well done, you know, see it through. I'm afraid the three I... minutes are up, so the last sentence, please. I can close on that, thank you. <laughs> okay, any questions at all? No? Okay, thank you very much, thank you for that. Now we move over to the ward member, Councillor Muller. very much, Chair. Yes, I'd like to agree with what um, um, Mrs Davis has actually said on this. Um, I've actually been involved with this project going back several years with the um, Cedars Park Residents Association. Uh, we've met with officers of the council on a regular basis and we continue to do so. I have also spoken to a police officer and discussed this with them and they are of the opinion that it's not dangerous at all and that concurs with what the highways department has said. This particular piece of art, we did actually ballot residents at Tesco's at Cedrus House and at the Regal Cinema in Stowe Market. And on those, we had six foot high boards at Tesco's and it stated specifically where the proposal was to cite this piece of art. So residents who voted, and there was over 700 people actually voted, 769 voted altogether um, for the piece of art. It actually ties in very well with Cedars Park because originally there was a Roman um, farm on Cedars Park and obviously the fields would have been ploughed so, and it's also relevant with the birds because obviously all the roads on Cedars Park are named after birds. We've actually, I've actually worked very closely with the Cedars Park Residents Association and the only reason that um, Mrs Davidson took over the project back in November because during the pandemic unfortunately no work was done on this project and no meetings were held but unfortunately, due to ill health of the members that were doing it from the Cedars Park Residents Association, uh, I asked Jenny if she would actually take over the project, and she has actually done so. Um, I know the area well. I live on Cedars Park myself. There is a footpath, cycle path, all the way along Dun Cotton Way, um, so there's no reason for cyclists to use the, the actual road um, at all. Um, we, we, I've spoken to a number of people, and in fact, only in the last week, Several residents have said to me personally, they're really looking forward to seeing this piece of artwork in place. We've, we've worked very, very hard as a community to get this together, and I'm pleased to be able to support the local community in seeing this to its end. So we did look at other locations across Cedars Park. One of them that's been mentioned, I think, by one of the objectors is what the area known as Big Park. The region, reason we rejected that area, because it's well known, there's lots of children play on it, it would be more likely to be vandalised, and that particular area is also subject to antisocial behaviour, and in the past there has been drug taking, drug dealing doing on there, because I've had meetings with the police representatives from the county and the district council, so we didn't want it to go there. I think the location is perfectly safe, and the majority of comments I have had have fully support this application. Therefore, I urge members to uh, approve this application uh, today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And Councillor Carter, sorry, I probably should have come to you first alphabetically, but over to you. I'm always happy to listen to Dave speak as well, so don't worry about that. Uh, yes, I was very pleased to see the, uh, the slide where it's actually showing the, uh, the view of the roundabout. We do have a beautiful skyline there. And 
we are known seas, but we do get some quite dramatic skies. And we've had many areas of natural scenery we've, we've been robbed of over the years, and it'd be shame to rob ourselves of this opportunity to enhance the view, to give those who aren't driving a moment to look up and enjoy. Um, I have had some objections uh, 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 come to me regards obstructing the view of around about, about causing the distraction of the drivers. Um, yet you only have to travel f further along down the road, for example, to roundabouts with advertising or even big old orange construction fencing littering of you, and these in part haven't seemed to impact his driving other than to complain that they wish that a beautiful enhancement was being done there instead. And all things willingly, at one point they will be. And studies have shown as well that um, art such as this, causing a dappled view uh, through and over, prompts drivers into concentrating harder, into slowing down and improving driving. And yes, the shape of the roundabout isn't ideal, uh, ideal for the uh, speed, but this could improve upon it, this could help, uh, help it. And I've had fears as well about the artwork placed there about possibility of vandalism, and we've heard again, having to get over to a, a hedge, people crossing the road, it's not likely to be going, going for. Um, but we can't change human nature, those who want to, may want to damage it, may want to damage it, but that's what we have insurance for. I don't think it's going to cause any further risk to people. Um, it, it, what we have the opportunity here is to actually give something to the locals, to actually the locals to call their own, to be proud of. A beloved lump in the middle of a road to, um, to, for people coming from and going to Stone Market to admire along the way. I can't honestly think of a reason why we shouldn't give ourselves a little gift to the soul, a little bit of artwork there. And I genuinely hope that you can't, eat, you can't think of a reason either. So thank you. Thank you very much. Can I just ask, I've got a question, questions for the ward members. Um, in terms of the longevity, so if it needs repair work in a, three years because something happens to it, do we know how that will be funded? Um, I can, sorry, am I here? Yeah, 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 you can ask <laughs> um, Yes, we have, a, we have a surplus over and above the cost of implementing the work of art. Um, we were able to insure it uh, for 10 years. Um, that, that was a requirement after that, in a number, or on that route, a number of things may occur. There's also uh, some sort of funding as well for, uh, for repairs for vandalism. I spoke to uh, David Blackburn, who's the, the uh, town clerk, uh, well back in, 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 early in, in the early stages of this, and, and he said, uh, every time we put a piece of work of art up in Stone Market, uh, the vandals get to it. That's what they do with their spray cans. So I think the balance of probability is that there will be some spraying in the early stages. Um, I looked up the cost of, of clearing uh, spray paint, etc., off, off a concrete wall, because the, the plinth will, will have that sort of surround. And it came out at about £250. The other thing is I've embedded in the contract with the blacksmith that if physical damage occurs, and, and, and I have some reassurance that the sections used, it will be extremely difficult to, to damage. But the contract uh, says that he will make them good at cost. So we've got, a, we've got some headroom in, in the budget, which we're retaining for that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the ward members? Yes, Councillor Wern. Thank you, Chair. Could I ask the ward members, it, do, you, do you see a reason why it should be in the... the I'm, I'm happy with the, the main piece of art, but the, the information board, do you see a reason why it has to be where it's shown on that drawing? Um, would you be happy if it were adjacent to the cycle track footway? Because it seems to me that anyone who's going to come and look at it... Well, it's, it looks as if it's wrong side of the hedge. No, it's, uh, thank you, Councillor Well. No, it's actually by the, the cycle footway. Right. So it won't impede the cycle footway, but it is actually next to that. Okay, thanks. Okay, no other questions. So members, over to you to discuss, debate, and come to a conclusion. Yes, Councillor Eben first, then Councillor Mathis. Um, thank you very much, Chair. 
um, I think this is a very interesting project. Um, I can understand the concerns from local residents about the roundabout, but I think the concerns actually relate more to the layout of the roundabout than, the, than, the, um, than having the artwork there. Um, and obviously we've got the, the comments from highways that um, have ex explained that, that that shouldn't be borne out in terms of safety. Overall, I think there's, there's artwork on a lot of roundabouts every, everywhere. You know, there's a lot in Bury St Edmunds. On the new estates in Ipswich, they have artwork throughout their estates. And I think it's such a shame that we don't have art so much in Stowmarket. We hardly have any on the new estates in Stowmarket. And so I think this is very good to see. And I think I would like to see more of it. And I'd be happy to support it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Matheson. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Well, I... I um, I can, I can, as, as, as the director has said, 19 years. Um, yeah, the when that roundabout was built, it was controversial. It is, it has been described as lozenge shaped, and I never understood any justification why that one was different to the other ones. Um, yes, yes, it makes it possible for people to go round there quicker, and which is a great pity. Uh, they should all be the same, and they should all discourage, as the highways. Authority has said uh, people from belting around them too fast, and, and that's all, all kind of um, uh, fa fair enough, really. So I, I don't, you know, I don't think that the, the artwork is changing that the difficulty, which as Councillor Eburn's already said, of the shape of the roundabout, etc. And the, the other thing that that struck me that I, I recall. Um, a long time ago now, um, at a planning committee agreeing that there was going to be some artwork um, sat on top of, of uh, I think it was a water, Anglian water installation, which might have been near Hedge Sparrow Drive. Um, I never heard why that didn't happen, but anyway, I think I'm pleased to see that at last, eventually, public art is is going to be provided uh, if we if we agree to it so uh, I, I you know I've got no hesitation in actually supporting it um, although I do note that that it was called here because it's it was controversial and that there are almost equal numbers of people supporting it and opposing it we didn't actually hear from councillor Muller what the um, the 769 people voted how, how that split down, actually, if, if we may. Thank, thank you, thank you, Councillor Matheson. I have, do have those figures with me. Just bear with me a second. Yep. Basically, as I say, we, we've had, the total was 769. Of those, six, six voting papers were spoilt. We had um, in Tesco's, 305 supported the Rural Reflections, which is the one that you're seeing today. 114 supported one called the Stowmarket Market Sheaf, and 251 supported the Fallen Feathers. In Cedrus House, 15 supported the Rural Reflections, 15 supported Stowmarket Market Sheaf, and 26 the Fallen Feathers. And in the Regal, seven supported the Rural Reflections, 10 supported the Stowmarket Market Sheaf, and 20 supported the Fallen Feathers. So overall, we had a clear winner with, with the rural reflections that we have here today. Oh, I see. I was, I was kind of assuming that, that, that they'd also been asked whether they didn't like it at all um, and, and objected to it, but that, that wasn't no, an option. No, they had a choice on the, of three. Yeah. They had a choice I think, I mean, it's a very good number of people that participated, yeah. um, and I think there's probably the support ballot numbers are, yeah. are um, min minimal, so we can assume yeah. that most people like the idea in general. Yeah, and I should add to that that the actual count was actually undertaken at Tesco's and it was under the supervision of the then town mayor of Stowmarket and also the manager of Tesco's. So okay. it was completely sure, it was done in a proper way. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Councillor Parsman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I've listened to the various discussions there very carefully. I do understand the perspective um, of, of the objector, but I think overall it is a good scheme. And I don't know if, Rachel, you proposed, proposed it, but I'm certainly happy to do that or second it. I think um, it's a good idea and very pleased to see it. Thank you. Councillor Field. Thank you. I won't repeat what everybody else has said. Uh, obviously, artwork is a good thing to have in this sort of location. 
I have to say I am a bit concerned about the highways uh, visibility issue. Um, we do seem to have highways persistently telling us that uh, the less you can see, the safer it is. Um, uh, I find that a difficult concept, but I have to accept that they're highways engineers and I am not, so it's probably correct. Um, and uh, on that basis, I'm quite happy to uh, support this. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I, just to add my c comment, I'll bring you, yeah. Um, so I, I hear what the objector says about could it be in other locations, um, and that is very valid, but of course that's not what we're here for. We're here, we can only look at the application before us in this location, and it's for us to only decide on what's before us. We have no opportunity to look at other sites today, um, because that's not what's before us. So I will support this as well. Um, Councillor, uh, sorry, you wanted to come back. Yeah. Councillor Wellham, you wanted to come back, sorry. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I support it. I think it's a very good idea. In terms of visibility, I think it's an advantage to have something fairly solid on the through, on the through line so that people do actually slow down. It is a bad design. Um, roundabouts are supposed to be designed so that you have to slow down before you go into the roundabout. On this particular design, you have to slow slow down when you're part way round, which is uh, which it can be a cause of accidents. But I think having a piece of art and having a, something that blocks the view through is an advantage, and I, I fully support it. I was just a bit concerned about the um, the information board. Thank you very much. Well, it's been proposed by Councillor Passmore and seconded by Councillor Eburn. So I'll now hand over to the to yourself to take us through the recommendation and for the electronic vote. Thank you, Chair. Some members, the recommendation is as in your papers. And that vote is now in progress. Chair, can I take your vote, please? Yes. Thank you. Sorry, members, you will need to scroll down to the bottom of the page because this was application 7C. Thank you, members. Chair, that's six votes for. That's unanimous. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. A, uh, which is, yeah, we'll just move the speakers around quickly.
Okay, so welcome back. We're now moving on to agenda item 7A, which is in the ward of Elmswell and Woolpit. Uh, and we'll now hand over to the case officer who will take us through this. Uh, so, Jasmine, over to you. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. I'm presenting a reserved matters application today for the erection of 86 dwellings at land north and west of School Road, Elmswell. The reserve matters being considered under this application include appearance, landscaping, layout and scale. Members are reminded that this presentation is solely in support of the committee report and in no way seeks to replace the content of that report. Putting the site into context, the site is shown by the hatched area. The railway line is located to the north of the site. Um, and the site is north of School Road and runs down towards Church Road. The site joins the existing settlement within Elmswell, which is located to the east. The outline application was presented to members in 2020 and included uh, access arrangements. As per the associated Section 106 agreement, affordable housing, highways improvements, preschool land, public open space, school contributions and upgrades to the public right of way were all secured. As per the table papers, we've received uh, two amended responses from Suffolk County Council Highways and Landscaping. Neither um, quantity object to the proposal. A summary is provided on screen of their comments. It is noted that several conditions are recommended, uh, which are to be added to the recommended list of conditions within your committee report. Here is the extent of the red line boundary for the site. The site adjoins Parnell Lane along the west, a public right of way and railway line run to the north, and School Avenue is located to the east. The site extends southwards and includes land adjoining School Road, as you can see by that kind of long area there. In terms of constraints, the built up area boundary of Elmsworth is shown uh, towards the east, shown by that brown line. Several listed buildings are um, located near to but outside of the site boundary. So you've got um, Arms Houses, which is Grade 2 star listed to the, the southwest. Uh, there's a public right of way, which is footpath 14, running along the northern boundary, which is shown by the green dashed line. The site's wholly within flood zone 1 and is not vulnerable to pluvial flooding. Here we have the illustrative site plan uh, zoomed out and zoomed in. Uh, this was submitted as part of the outline application and as I say is wholly illustrative. It demonstrated how 86 dwellings could materialise on the site, including public open space, uh, sustainable urban drainage systems, early years land and landscaping. As you can then see, the spine road um, is entirely as per the um, illustrative outline drawings and the layout is broadly in accordance with that as well. A permissive path is proposed along the eastern boundary connecting to School Avenue and School Road and runs adjacent to the land set aside for the early years provision, which is just to that north uh, shown by kind of the white area. Uh, an attenuation basin and swales are incorporated and contribute to the overall landscaping of the site and public open space is central within that site. In terms of story heights, there will be both bungalows and two-story dwellings incorporated in this, into the scheme, which you can see just around. You've also got single-story garages as well, which are shown between some of the dwellings. Uh, a mixture of red brick and rendered elevations are proposed, whilst a variety of roof tiles are also proposed, uh, these are to be agreed by condition as requested by the Council's Heritage Team, um, that is reflected in the proposed uh, recommendation by officers. Follow, uh, the following four slides provide some CGI images of the site demonstrating how the variety of house types, materials, scales and architectural features will be used across the site. This image looks into the site from the southern access point. Private drives are highlighted by a change in materials, as you can see, between the uh, tarmac main spine road and the pink um, drive. Um, 
houses would be fronted by landscaping before uh, meeting school road along that southern area so you can kind of see where you've got the, the fencing and then an area of kind of um, landscape buffer. This image so shows the dwellings facing onto Parnell Road and over the adjacent field towards the almshouses and church. Again, you can see a change in surfacing materials between the private drive and a more secondary, uh, a more formal secondary link road. Here we have the dwellings facing again onto Parnell Lane and the attenuation basin, but this is at the top of the site. Again, there is landscaping separating the dwellings from adjacent fields, offering a more rural edge of settlement character. Finally, we have the dwellings which would um, look over the public open space in the centre of the site. These would offer a form of natural surveillance, as you can see. The following two slides provide a flavour of the variation in materials, scales and architectural features which uh, will be within the street scene. So, street scene A at the top uh, shows the dwellings facing northwards, um, which would then face onto the public right of way. Uh, street scene B shows the dwellings facing northwards towards the land set aside for the early years pro um, provision in kind of the this northern half of the site. And then street scene C shows the dwellings around the public open space, which is similar to what was shown on the um, CGIs. Street scene D at the top shows the housing facing onto Parnell Lane, um, which was shown in CGI images two and three. And then street scene E at the bottom shows the site frontage onto School Road. Uh, in terms of the hard surfacing approach, uh, in order to demarcate the different areas within the site and improve legibility, the main spine road would be tarmacked and different types of block paving would be used for the link roads and private drives. Rolled hogging would be used for the proposed permissive path along the eastern boundary of the site, which is suitable for wheelchair and pushchair use. Whilst there are some triple parking plots, these are all surplus to the required parking under Suffolk County Council parking guidance. These would, however, provide additional parking spaces if required and are all located off of private drives and near to visitor spaces as well. Um, active EV charging points are provided to all plots with garages. Those without will have ducting installed to facilitate the installation of EV charging at a later date. Secure and covered cycle storage is provided to each dwelling either within the garage or sheds on plot. 47 plots would have PV installed as shown by the green dots, which I'm not sure you can really see that well, um, but that's on 47 of the plots, which are all the ones uh, in blue as well. Uh, the pink plots, which are 39 plots, are to be built under current building regulations, which is pre-June 2023, but they offer a 19% improvement over the existing regs anyway. The blue plots, uh, which is the 47, are to be built under new building regs post-June 2023. There are a range of boundary treatments proposed across the site, ranging from timber panel fencing between the gardens, close bordered fencing um, to parking areas, brick walls to visible locations along the um, main roads, and knee rail fencing to the site boundaries. Starting from the southern access, this plan shows a variety of landscaping around the site, including wildflower meadows, amenity grass, seasonal wetlands, sensory mix, trees and ornamental hedgerows. The variety of landscaping in the southern area is then continued through uh, the site towards the northern area, so you can see with that attenuation basin in the northwest corner. Um, place services are happy with the proposed landscaping as per the tabled papers. The recommendation is therefore to approve the reserve matters at, as per officer's recommendation within the committee report and the tabled papers. Thank you for listening. Thank you for that. Could you just run through, sorry to hog the limelight straight off, could you just run through for me why, they're, why it's being built in two tiers? I mean, why can't it all be done to the maximum? Why is it not being all done to the best possible standard? Why are we, in many ways, doing it in two tiers and why haven't all the houses have, have the applicant I mean we can ask them when they come up any reasons at this stage um, obviously there'll be uh, differences in you know they'll have to discharge a lot of conditions and there'll be um, the phasing of the development as well but it will 
I'd, I'd suggest probably um, asking the applicant that question. And heating of the houses? Uh, yes, sorry. So that's uh, to be by gas boilers, but there will be um, hydrogen converter <laughs> kits provided. Final question, sorry. Triple parking, my favourite. Um, could you just run through how many have triple parking and where those people are meant to park? Because we know what tends to happen. Yes, so um, I can't give you an exact number. I can count them for you uh, if you want, but all of the ones that do have triple parking on, um, it's all surplus to the requirement under Suffolk County Council's parking guidance. So if they remove the garage, it would still be in accordance with the parking um, and it wouldn't then be kind of that triple parking. It would just be the, the kind of tandem parking. So we can pick that up with the applicant as well. OK, thank you. Yes, Councillor Matheson and Councillor Field. <coughs> yeah, the, the, I'm conf confused about the, this business about the, um, the, the preschool, which inevitably, although it's not before us today, we are effectively determining where it's going to go. And, and the, there was the reasonable point that was made that, the, um, that it, it was as far into the estate as it could be, maximising the fact that inevitably quite a few of the kids will be brought in in cars going past all the houses or as many houses as possible effectively um, but that this had been addressed and changed but I I, 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 I couldn't really quite see where the pre, preschool was going to go on the indicative and I, I wonder whether and it seems, still seems to be as far away from the from school road as it could possibly be um, can, can you just help understand what changes and negotiations have or haven't gone on there, please. Alicia, could you get up the, um, the slides for me? Thank you. <laughs> right, if I just scroll back. So can you see, I don't know, if, is the, the mouse set up yet? There we go. So this is where the, the preschool land is going as per this application. Uh, just for reference as well, if I go back one, that was where it previously was going. Um, this land, so as per the section 106, the land and contribution is all that is secured under that section 106. Obviously, as you say, further details of the the overall appearance and everything will come forward in a separate application. Secured in that location or secured somewhere? Secured somewhere on site. So I believe what happened in terms of the um, negotiations, but you may wish to ask uh, the applicant about this anyway, is I believe it had been moved somewhere to the south here, but there were concerns about the parking, um, particularly along School Road. So it's then been moved back, which is... Um, the Highway Authority and um, Education are happy with where it is located. Um, additional kind of visitor spaces have been provided around it, which I would note is, is not required, but has been nonetheless provided. Um, and there is also this path um, which would run along, which obviously connects into School Avenue, as I said, but would allow kind of a, a walking route to school, which would also be suitable for pushchairs. Yeah, so it's maybe maybe the, the, the location has sort of changed twice, and, and um, but it, it is now back in a position which maximises cars going past houses to get there by car. Um, yeah, okay, well, thank you. Okay, Councillor Field, you were next. Thank you. <coughs> you mentioned um, gas boilers with hydrogen conversion kits. I, I just wondered, uh, when do we imagine uh, the gas grid will be 20% hydrogen and when's it going to be 100% hydrogen? Unlikely in my lifetime I guess but uh, have you got a figure that you're, you're relying on? Um, so that's one question. Uh, second one on a slightly different tack is there, there's quite a lot in page 59 about the preschool and various acoustic requirements. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything in the recommendations about acoustic requirements for anywhere. 
Could you explain the difference between those two things? Chairman, could I, could I just chip in? So perhaps, Councillor, you can direct me, because I'm looking at the version on the website and it doesn't have numbering in it, which comment you're picking up on that, because I was going to say something about preschool at this point. Um, the comment from Andy Rushton Edwards, which I say on page 59 in my favour, oh. Mid-Suffolk, working together, environmental protection officer, there's a whole load of things about, there's some of it's about the preschool building, which I guess will be decided when the building is approved, but some of it seems to be acoustic <laughs> things. I'm not sure quite whether it's to prevent the children suffering from the railway or the residents suffering from the children. There's, there's <laughs> we'll some extended we'll uh, comments there. We'll bring in Philip on that point. More detailed than I've seen before. So, so, Chairman, without commenting on mutually assured destruction, um, the reserve matters that you have before you do not include the preschool. They are literally still within the description of, of development as uh, described by the application, so that's a piece of housekeeping we will need to do uh, following this meeting, and uh, the, the applicant is in agreement that from the description of development we remove early years, because you're not looking at the reserve matters for that building at this point in time, and indeed they will follow on. So the design of the building, the technical comments that we have there, clearly will be relevant at that point in time. But at the moment, the application, as you have before you, does not have and should not be treated as being the reserve matters for the early years building because I cannot tell you what they are and nor are they a part of, of the application, save for the site of it and its location within this development. So to that extent, you know, as a reserve matters application, the description includes early years provision, and I suspect that's simply because it follows along from the outline, but literally, early years provision are not, the reserve matters are not present here, and I'm not asking committee to make a decision on them. Thank you. And presumably there's no acoustic requirement to the rest of the building <coughs> to isolate it from the railway track. That's not... Um, I, I would expect any of that would come, I mean, there's clearly the site and the building will need to be detailed reserve matters for uh, appearance, landscaping, layout, scale of building for the preschool. All of those elements will address that point. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Passman. And, sorry, there was a question about hydrogen and when is it you know, we're imagining this will happen? Uh, I, I think, Chairman, Planning officers are not in a position to give you advice on that. Um, we would suggest you decide the application in front of you. Thank you. One final question may I have? There's a, a, a issue about the transfer of open space to a management company or other nominated body such as the parish council. It talks about open space. There's presumably quite a bit of road uh, that will need to be transferred here and also, um, you know, roads that are made of uh, brick, I think the highways tend not to adopt those. Um, so th there's roads, there's also a suds drainage system where it's unclear who will be adopting that. I just wondered uh, um, what the constraints on that management company, what sort of form it takes and the, its ability to raise charges to residents at uh, subsequent years. Some experience of that it can get excessive. Chairman, I think we've all seen the situation that's emerged with management companies in relation to open space and other matters. They're not part of the reserve matters as you have before them. Um, and I think from memory, the section 106 did include the potential for, for transfer, transfer uh, locally. Uh, I'd need to check further whilst the meeting goes on to confirm that. I don't have any of the management company details to talk to this morning, but clearly I, I recognise the issue. Um, uh, and in practical terms, uh, you know, they, they sit as an agreement, uh, an element under the section 106, and as I say, I'll continue to check that and perhaps come back to Councillor Field during the course of the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Parsons. Um, thanks, Matthew. Just two or three points, if I may. Um, one thing I noticed on page 69, um, the um, second indented point there towards the bottom, um, concerning it recommends a minor change in the alignment of this, this section of the estate road. I just want to know if that had been taken into account. I know it's very specific. It's on page 69. 
Um, this is from the police services bloke. Um, it's about travelling north along the school road, the proposed estates road between plots 80 and 81. It's page 69. Have you got that one? I'm sorry it's a bit specific, but that is... I don't know whether that's been taken into account. Um, yes, so we've had the, as per your tabled papers, there's an additional um, updated response. So there was an amended layout that was submitted which has addressed all of the, the previously kind of raised comments. If I may, one you will not be surprised to hear me say, because I think I bring this up at every meeting, um, and I think it can be conditioned, but, but we can it regarding um, driveways and the permeability so we don't end up with hard standing driveways as we live in such a dry part of the country, so that we maximise the permeable surfaces as possible. And I also wanted to ask, if I may, on um, details of biodiversity, does it include things like um, swift boxes, house martin cups, etc.? Without going through a great big shopping list, I know there's lots, but can we put all those in? I'm quite happy to take it from the point of view that that would all be looked at in general anyway. So it's the drainage, not having too much hard standing in, you know, on driveways and just the biodiversity part. Please, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, that we could, you know, we could condition um, certainly the permeable surfaces with the, the block paving, and I suspect they probably will be permeable anyway. Um, in terms of the biodiversity, I'm not sure if there was a condition um, on the outline. Yeah, so there's a condition on the outline. Yeah, that's already been sorted. Philip, you wanted to come back? Thank you, Chairman. Yes. So the section 106 uh, for Councillor uh, Fields benefit uh, assumes uh, potential transfer to management company or Elmsville Parish Council or such other body as the District Council may, may elect. So there's a, a cascade mechanism set out within the section 106 for the open space provision. Um, details at this stage I don't think have been sorted out and I imagine that there's a conversation uh, to be had with the Parish Council regarding the detail of uh, whether or not they wish to uh, have any role in taking the land on uh, and certainly uh, uh, a question whether uh, that might fall to the district council so not don't have the detail it's managed within the section 106 um, in relation to the outline permission uh, and it doesn't necessarily uh, need to be uh, a, a, a concluded picture at this point so um, we have the details such as we have i can't try and provide more light on the, on the issues thank you thank you councillor well Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a question about the approval process for the preschool. It says in 12.2 on 28 um, that it will be subject to scrutiny by the Parish Council and by members. Uh, so it, th that will come before a District Council committee. Do the county have any role in this? Depending on who the applicant is, if the county makes an application to itself, they're in, they are in equally entitled to rely upon the planning permission that exists. They might apply in their own right on the land. So you could see the site come forward in one of two ways, either through the planning authority ourselves or through the county who would then consult us. Those are both perfectly possible and we cannot prescribe which route is possible. So there's no indication one way or the other at present? No. no okay, no thank you. Um, are there any proposals to assist crossing School Road from the site? At which point, Chair? Well, at, at, are there, um, for instance, where the, <coughs> the footpath towards the preschool site is going. Uh, we're talking about people would be able to use that, that footpath, the new footpath, to get to the preschool site. Are there crossing points? Um, I'm only thinking of drop curves. I'm not thinking about, you know, traffic lights or anything. Uh, uh, sorry, Chairman. So there's, there's a footway runs around the northern edge of School Road, um, and there's footway connection which runs down to that 
on the east side of the site within the landscape belt there. Are, is, uh, are you referring to crossing the road there going south onto the land on the other side of School Road? I'm, uh, at, a, at any point, is there other drop curves or any other proposals to get from one side of School Road to the other? Um, I mean, there are three possible locations. I just wondered if there are drop curves either existing or proposed at either where the red dot is, near, near the Spine Road, or at the other end of the site. <coughs> so, um Chairman, there is shared cycleway footway designed for that uh, highway verge uh, side area running all the way yeah, along. Yeah. So I imagine as that will terminate the footway to the east and there's um, potentially a drop cut, I would need to check the drawings and uh, need a little time just to, just to look at that detail, Chairman, but I imagine that's part of what's anticipated. Uh, but in terms of a drop curb for general access, I'm, uh, I, I'd have to check further. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor um, Sorry, you, so want, you had one, one more. Other, other question on the tenure plan. On the, the, the plan of tenures. Um, it, it appears that all the affordables are, well, they're, they're, not, they're not dotted around the site. They seem to be mainly around the, the preschool site. Uh, are you happy with that? Is that as recommended? Uh, is, is that, you know, a, a, a good way forward? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so in terms of the um, affordables, so you've got, um, I believe there's 22 in, um, well, you've got 14 in one cluster, and then I think it was about 13 or probably a little bit more in another one um, towards the northern part of the site, like you say. Having said that, they are separated. There are open market dwellings in between and kind of intervening, so there are kind of two clusters um, strategic housing um, have, obs have assessed the application and have checked the locations of those affordable units and they are content with uh, the approach that's been taken. And I haven't checked, but uh, do, do we know how many of those are to the higher standard and how many to the, you know, the post-2023 standard or the, the current standard? Uh, in terms of building regulations, yeah, yeah I think they were all... Uh, pink ones, so I think they were pre, um, yeah, they're to be built under the current building regulations, but under those current building regulations, they are still offering a 19% improvement beyond what is currently required. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Ibram, um, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I also wanted to ask about the same question as Keith, as Councillor Wellham. But secondly, the uh, landscaping um, along, can you just confirm what landscaping is along the railway side? Um, it's quite hard to see, and I'm not sure what was agreed. At, I can't find anything that was agreed at, um, at outline for that. And my other question, I think, is for the um, applicant. Thanks. Thank you. So I think uh, in terms of the, the landscape, I'm just looking at the, the plan now. I don't know if, Alyssa, do you want to... Get it up. I don't know if it's going to be able to be very visible. Um, so as you can see, there is kind of a, a landscaped buffer um, to the top. I believe it probably isn't going to be more than kind of grassland, meadowland, that sort of thing. Um, as you can see, that there are I'll use that. Um, there are some kind of sporadic trees and some some hedgerows. Um, if I go to scroll down. So can I come back? Is that a sound buffer then, or just a very simple um, decorative buffer, let's say? I think it is just a decorative buffer, but you may wish to ask that of the, the applicant. Councillor Matheson. Thank you, Chair. We, we've very much been looking at the, 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 the main built part of the site, but the, the red line, of course, includes the road all the way down to the church, more or less. And really, I've got two, two questions which, um, which relate down to the, that bottom end. So maybe we have a, a slide that shows us that. The, the, the first one is regarding the, the, this goes back to the outline section 106, um, where we did, we were particularly offered um, to secure the possibility of the cycle route 
eventually to Woolpit, um, going round the back of the church, effectively. And um, th that's, that's, um, <coughs> that's mentioned in 4.2, particularly, um, where, where the 4.2 talks about the cycle infrastructure towards the church. Um, and the, the parish council does feel on page 15, um, their point number four, that, the, that we are somehow removing the opportunity for the community cycle and footway to be delivered um, passing behind the church. And I, I wondered if we could just explore that a bit carefully, because I don't, definitely don't want to do what the parish are saying it does do, if I make, make the point well enough. And um, yeah, I'll just keep the second one back while we look at the first one, perhaps. So in terms of the, um, the cycleway footway provision, Yep. There we go. Um, so the, I believe that the blue line plan under the outline included this area kind of running, as you say, behind the church. The site plan for the reserve matters does not include that land. It only runs up to the junction with Church Road. So there will be some highways improvements along this, uh, along School Road and Church Road, um, and School Road leading to, to Church Road, but it, it doesn't include anything around the church, and that would have to be delivered separately. Perhaps Councillor Geek may be able to help us. Oh, the parish is it. Apologies. Um, well... Perhaps we, we can ask the parish representative or the ward representative to, to explain how apparently um, we, we are going to lose that opportunity if we approve what we've got in front of us. So we'll, we'll come back to that one, Chair. The, the, other, the other question I've got, is paragraph 5.5, um, <clears throat> there's a discussion about um, the, the works that are required to the junction of School Road, Church Road, um, and, and it, 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 it seems it's, it's seems to have almost been to a chicken and egg situation where, where we need to bring this, we need to get this application approved quickly um, in order to get the, the highway works done. Um, but on the other hand, really, we want the highway works done before the development takes place. Uh, and... Um, and this all, this all um, seems to be part of an argument as to why we needed to have brought this forward um, possibly before everything was um, finalised with, with the consultees. Um, so I don't know whether anybody can explain um, how, how this can be resolved. It's as if the county aren't prepared to do the works unless we approve these reserved matters. But on the other hand, they're already shall required I, under the outline, aren't they? Bring Philip in on that point. Cha Chairman, shall I try and shed light uh, into a slightly confusing situation? So when the application came before committee in January 2021, I recall there was quite a lot of debate around the provision of the cycleway footway. Um, I'm struggling at the moment to lay hands on the plan that's got it, but I've certainly seen a plan in relation to, I think, the discharge of one of the conditions that shows that link potentially available, but the link is not designed and funded at this point in time, and that will rest, that will, that will fall back to Sustrans County Council, a another body to actually. The link, so the link, at the, the, the link at the back of the church. So, um, Jasmine, for the ease of reference, perhaps if we can get a site plan which shows that sort of area, that would be useful. So, and if, if you use the, so it, there is effectively a, a uh, one, one of the drawings on, there are a suite of discharge condition applications and this reserve matters application, which are presently with us. Um, th there is intention to reserve that land for that purpose 
and that has been uh, achieved, but it's not being delivered by these reserve matters because it needs to be separately funded and, and delivered. So the intent is to make it happen that when and how isn't sorted by the outline permission here, and that's understandable because the outline permission doesn't cause that as a, as a harm which must be mitigated. So that's that element of it. This application includes reserve matters relating to the footway cycleway connection from the area adjacent to the arms houses uh, up School Road uh, and round into the village. So they are, uh, they are part of the reserve matters uh, presently before you. Uh, certainly I think there is discussion within the community about whether what's on the table is acceptable. I've spent some time um, on site with both the applicant uh, and their team and with the parish council and board member and county councillor discussing this uh, and met with highway, highway officers to discuss the school road junction um, in particular terms with uh, county and, and uh, ward members, um, albeit I don't think Councillor Geek was present from memory. So um, there is a proposal to improve the junction which uh, I think uh, it is it is agreed is the most appropriate solution in the circumstances, albeit this is not a perfect situation, but then the present situation is not perfect at the, at the school road junction. And then there is the question of the cycleway footway, which is part of this, is governed, governed by a number of conditions uh, in the section 106 and the, the planning permission. So th that's that. And what you have before you is a reserve matters application, which includes some of that detail. But you've also got comments from uh, County Highway Authority, the, sec the timing question I think was referred to, uh, and in essence, part of this is about finding capacity in the road network to be able to do the works, because it's quite a long program of work. I'm sure the applicant can remind us, because it, uh, I've been told more than once before about how long it will take, but I think uh, of the order of 20 or so weeks at least is potentially the time that this road will be subject to works happening. So that time needs to be booked with the Highway Authority. The section 278 has been through stage two safety audit and as I understand it in relation to the junction and cycleway it has been uh, approved. Um, and uh, the, uh, the works then obviously need to be booked in to, to deliver them. Now my point to any planning committee is that none of that pays for the works. So you know the delivery of the scheme and the timing of that I'm sure uh, the applicant can speak to much better than I, but it matters in the sense that proceeding with the scheme enables the funding of these works which take us one step forward in terms of connectivity and dealing with uh, addressing improvement to the school road junction. I mean, there is a lot more I could say, Chairman, I'll leave it there. Well, that was a fine long answer for, for a short question. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep, keep the point and bring it and ask the, the parish council what the particular concern is. That's up to is. You. Yeah. you. That's your call. You have that choice to ask the parish council anything. Okay. Thank you. So, we'll, um, no other questions uh, on that. So, we'll now move on. We now move on uh, firstly to the parish council. And Mr. Peter Dow, welcome. Uh, you have three minutes and over to you when you're ready, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we're very grateful for the involvement of your chief planning officer who has attended on two site meetings and help to concentrate minds on the two issues which are most important to the community. The first, of course, is the road. The latest iteration um, is one following many which have founded on highways issues. I realise that you are bound by the professionals, the highways officers at Suffolk County Council, who like things like oval roundabouts, but we, we'll, we'll just brush over that. Um, but there's considerable disappointment in the community about the apparent width of school road that is on offer. It does not allow the safe passage of two HGVs and it will simply confirm the problems which are currently encountered whereby people have twice in the last three months been struck by the wing mirrors of lorries as pedestrians try to walk down the road. Um, there is disappointment that the the cycle path, the community pathway, is not grade separated and physically separated from the pavement. What it looks as though, in the eyes of the community we're getting, is a slightly wider pavement on which bicycles can pass. That is causing a lot of concern. Um, it may be too late, but 
I would ask members to be aware and help us towards a much safer result and give careful consideration if they're minded to think that this could be improved to go back to highways and try to get it improved. The other issue is the preschool facility. It's on a very cramped site. Um, parking is essentially, as on the indicative layout, will just about deal with the staff. Um, the site is at the village boundary, so the majority of people will drive to drop their kids off. Remembering that they quite often do this twice in the day. It isn't like a primary school morning and evening. It's morning, afternoon and evening. In order to do that, they will either park on school road and walk down the, uh, the walkway, the pavement, uh, leaving a very dangerous situation on school road, or they'll drive through the estate and look for somewhere to park. What is suggested is that the indicative uh, layout of the site could be changed so that the school, the preschool site, could be adjacent to the green space, which would first of all allow some breathing, some what we call forest school facility for our existing nurseries in the village. Uh, and it could also allow some leeway in terms of parking for delivering and leaving uh, the kids at the nursery. Um, parking on school road otherwise we see as inevitable and incredibly dangerous. And if, if members could address both of those issues in depth, we'd be very grateful. Thank you very much. Any questions at all? Yeah, Councillor Matheson. Yeah, can, can, you, can you elaborate on, on your, um, your fourth point, um, which, which is saying that um, as at point three, the proposal effectively removes the opportunity for the community cycle footway to be delivered on a path which passes behind the church? What we're afraid of is that even though 106 allows that that land can be used, and I don't know the technicalities of that, once having created the path which doesn't use that very, very much preferred route, once having created the, the substandard route, it will be the more difficult to, um, to reverse that process and go behind the church. Going behind the church uh, removes uh, two obstacles. First of all, you remove the danger, the serious danger of the school or church road junction. And secondly, you remove the gradient you end up on the same level on down Bunkers Hill as you, because the church is in effect on a mound. You don't have to climb the mound and go down the mound, you go round the mound, making it a much, much more desirable way uh, to get down to Wolfin. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I understand exactly why you wanted the outline discussion to put it behind the church. Um, what I don't understand is how this, the, the alignment that's proposed in front of us for, for that cycle path um, prevents it from then going behind the church. Um, I don't build highways. I would imagine that having spent the money and done the engineering works to, to follow the route as proposed, it would be the more difficult and the more expensive to reroute it. But hopefully I'm wrong. Philip, do you want to come in on that point, I think? Uh, if I can shed a little more light. Um, so, the section 106 associated with the outline anticipated a three metre wide cycleway footway uh, running alongside School Lane, which was shown uh, on what looks to be an aerial photograph. At a point, um, and Jasmine, if you could get the plan up again, um, so I can kind of guide members on this. Uh, if you see the row of houses along Church Road and there's a, there's the boundary at the rear garden boundary of that yeah, if you've got that up on the other side of the road approximately that's where a, a safeguarded area an additional three meter wide cycle path um, is safeguarded now in the section 106 let me just refer to a different document So, um, so you effectively have a, a, a linear route skirting the back of the church, which then drops down to uh, join Church Lane um, at a point I would say is approximately 20 or so metres beyond uh, the, the southwest boundary of the church. But 
that's doing this by eye off an aerial photograph, so I wouldn't want to be quoted. And, and this is, this is an, you know, the, the note attached to the drawing in the section 106 says it, it, exact alignment will depend on site levels, so there is some sorting of that. However, that's just the route. In terms of the document itself, it's an obligation to the county council, not to the district council. And that makes sense because of the funding questions we've talked about and the, and the network provision. Um, if you bear with me, Chairman, I'm nearly there. Yeah, it's a covenant to the County Council specifically um, to reserve and not use the pedestrian cycle link land for any purpose that would render it unsuitable for its intended purpose under the deed, i.e. as a cycle path uh, pedestrian link, uh, for a period of 10 years. So that holds the position for 10 years. I'm not sure how these reserve matters compromise that. Um, and uh, there's clearly a, a mechanism for uh, transfer and uh, construction, which is, is built into this, but the funding is not there. So there's, there's a degree of ensuring the land can come across to the county council and is held for the time being available for the purpose. But again, I'll come back to the purpose of this planning committee. This planning committee is considering reserve matters. Um, we are not considering the detail of that. They, I don't believe, have been funded or uh, uh, designed in a way which would allow us to s state with certainty where they will connect to. Uh, although, as you've heard from uh, uh, up to Elmsville Parish Council, clearly there is some disappointment. Um, I, I think I'd question his pejorative language of substandard. Technical adv advice we have on the proposals before you this morning are not that they're substandard. Um, and that may be what you call a difference of opinion. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, thank, th thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, so I think the essential point is, is that the, the cycle path as proposed today is going to is going to drop cyclists like in front of the arms house or beside the arms houses uh, and and that it would to divert behind the, the arms houses and the church it would need to have diverted a little bit sooner before it reached the final point yeah and and that therefore that last bit is tending to to yeah i, I see think i see the point um and um, we're, we're on questions at the moment yeah i think we What's the question? I think, no, I think the, the, the question now is I think that it's sufficiently explained, so okay. I understand the point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions at all at this point? No. For the parish council? No. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, we'll now move on to... Uh, wrong page, sorry. Uh, so we'll now move on to the... Where's it going? A bit of paper. Okay, now move on to the applicant, Alex Clark. Thank you. Um, uh, and then we have some others who can answer questions as needed. And again, over to you and three minutes, please. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Uh, my name is Alex Clark, and I'm the Design Technical Director at Blore Homes Eastern. I'm joined this morning by Steve Lee as Architectural Technical Manager, and James Bailey as our Planning Agent. Between us, we should be able to answer any questions that you may have about our scheme at School Road Elmswell. As set out in the officer's report, the site already benefits from an existing outline plan and consent. It's in an allocation within the emerging Baber and Mid-Suffolk Joint Local Plan, and it is also identified as a site for growth within the currently drafted Elmswell Neighbourhood Plan. It is therefore clear that the principle of residential-led development on this site has already been agreed. The Reserve Matters application is now providing the detail in terms of layout, scale, appearance and landscaping. The application was submitted to Mid-Suffolk District Council in March of this year, and it followed detailed pre-application discussions with both district and county council officers, ward members, and Elmswell Parish Council. The benefits of the scheme before you include that all the poems will meet the nationally described space standards, or NDSS, with Bloor Homes being one of the only few developers and builders to offer this within Mid-Suffolk. There will be electric vehicle charging points for all on-plot parking spaces, with ducting being provided where this is not possible. The scheme is meeting the council's emerging policy of 19% carbon reduction. Alongside improved fabric efficiency, this is being achieved by proposing flue gas heat recovery systems alongside hydrogen conversion kits. 
Some PVs are being provided across the site, depending on the orientation of the plot. This is the same energy strategy that we used for our development at Stow Upland and recently approved at Union uh, Road in One House. We also agreed this approach to our site along Melford in Baber. As set out in the officer's report at paragraph 6.7, it is felt that these proposed measures are reasonable and proportionate. A site for a proposed preschool has been discussed and agreed with Suffolk County Council Education Department. A number of positions have been considered for the preschool, which have included extensive discussions with officers from the district and county, the parish council and the ward members. Its final location towards the middle of the eastern boundary is deemed acceptable by Suffolk County Council in terms of its delivery and also from a highways perspective. Various highways improvements were also sought through the outline consent, which we are now proposing to bring forward. These include improvements to the Church Road School Road Junction, road widening along certain parts of School Road, and the delivery of a significant proportion of the Elmswell Woolpit footpath and cycleway, all of which are detailed in the outline consent. I am pleased to report that the working drawings have been technically approved by Suffolk County Council, an independent road safety audit has also been approved, and the legal agreements are currently being engrossed, with the necessary licenses applied to commence the work in August. In conclusion, the proposals you see before you this morning have been developed through extensive discussions with officers, members, Elmsall Parish Council and the local community. There are no objections from any of the statutory consultees and Bloor Homes are committed to bring forward a high quality sustainable housing scheme which starts with positive engagement with the local community. But Both myself. Last sentence, please. Thank you, sir. Both myself and my technical colleagues are therefore happy to commit ourselves here this morning to being the first points of contact with the parish and ward members if there are any concerns. And on this basis, we re respectfully request the members endorse the officer's recommendation and approve this application this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, questions. Who wants to go first? Councillor Evan. Um, thank you, Chair. If I could pick up the building regs um, point, because building regs were. Um, changed exactly a week ago today i think um so we've got a year of interim before they become um permanent in june 2023 so they're out there they're published what and you you knew they were coming <laughs> well everybody knew they were coming so can you can you explain why you're only doing half the units and and particularly um you're not doing the affordables in the new building regs and then secondly could you um ex oh could i ask whether you you would be prepared to do more landscaping along the railway side because I think that's um, very poor landscaping there. So if you could um, respond to those two, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Eben. Um, so in terms of uh, sustainability, uh, I think it was probably about six weeks ago, I, I sat in front, or two months ago, sat in front of this committee and we had a, a probably 20 minute discussion around you know, what we as a developer are looking to do. Um, in terms, of, in terms of building regs, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, in, 20, in 2023, it's all based around when the foundations of that particular plot go in. So on this site, we've anticipated when that's likely to be. Um, we're meeting your emerging policy of 19% across the board. Um, and from that point in time of June 23, when the foundations of those plots go in, they'll meet building regulations, which is what we're committed to doing. But you're not really answering the question, why are the affordables in the first round and not getting the higher quality home? Um, I believe some of the affordables are um, in the top uh, middle, middle section, so it's not all of them aren't. Um, it's purely based around build route and how we would build that, that site. And in actual fact, you could look at it in a positive way that we're looking to deliver those, those units first. Yeah, you can spin anything. Uh, you could also argue the opposite. Uh, so why is the whole site, can you just explain, why aren't you just doing the whole site to the higher standard? I mean, why, why not just do it so there's no difference between half the estate? Why, why not just do it all to the better standard? Because bu building regs dictates um, that, uh, well, the energy, the energy policy that this council has, emerging policy, is 19%, which we're, we're meeting. So we're in excess of this council's existing policy. We're meeting the emerging policy, and we'll also be meeting building regulations. I get all that, but we do have other developers who come here who go way above the current guidelines and, and say we're going above that. But what you're saying is you're going to do the minimum, but 19% more. So you're not going to do. So you're doing it in two phases, and that's set in stone. 
we'll, we'll meet building regs at the time okay. that those foundations okay. go Can into. Can we just talk about gas boilers and the hydrogen question that Councillor Fields has brought up earlier? Yeah, so as I, as I said, we, we sat here a couple of months ago and had quite a detailed discussion about this. We uh, are going to be predominantly gas on, on this site. It'll be with gas uh, boilers. We'll provide hydrogen conversion kits. We're in discussions with the likes of GTC and Cadent, um, and they are currently up upgrading their network at, at the minute. Uh, they believe that, uh, that there's going to be, again, a phased input of, of hydrogen as in terms of when a blend will, will come in, and they've um, set uh, uh, targets for when that's likely to be. Um, I don't have those in front of me, but I think 2030 was when they were. So, so in effect, since you last came to the committee, Bloor Homes has not progressed moving to air source heat pumps like other developers. You're still going to go with gas for as long as you can, and that's the principle, is it? On this particular development, yeah. that is what our proposal is. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, could you respond about the landscaping along the railway? Yeah, sure, please, sure. Thank you very much for your question. Um, so it's a soft landscape buffer across that, that section. So there is some, I think there's hedge planting across there. Um, there is a, an existing chain link fence which separates the um, network rail land from the, the, the site, and we're looking to landscape in front of that. So you wouldn't put a, um, more of a sound barrier and a, and a deeper, would you put a deeper landscaping to, to be more of a kind of sound barrier for... So we've, we've, because obviously all the container trains yeah. come from Felixstowe at all hours um, with hundreds and hundreds of containers on and that's not quiet. So would you put a, more of a sound barrier type landscaping along the railway side? Thanks. So what, thank you. Thank you again for your question. What we've done as part of that, um, the, the, the site, is we've done acoustic report, which I think was submitted as, as part of this application, that identified that with the houses as at the orientation that they are front front on the private gardens, behind those would stop, drop below the 55 dB um, mark, which is, which is the accepted mark. Um, we would be looking to have additional ventilation within those rooms at the, at the front. Um, but again, that's, that's all detailed within the, the report. So there is, because of the orientation of the houses fronting onto that railway line, that provides um, some blockage to the houses behind of that. So that has been considered in the design of the, in the orientation of the plots. That's a pass me. Um, thank you, Matthew. I'm going to ask the same question, but in a different way, to see if we can extract a proper answer. Um, I'm seriously, I mean, Matthew's absolutely right. We do get other developers, they really do enhance their environmental credentials, and we, that's really what we all want to do um, here in Mid-Suffolk. So would you be prepared to look at the um, application and revise upwards the proportion of housing that meets the latest regulations, building regulations that have been announced. I think other developers might. I don't know whether we have the power to do that or not as a committee, um, so that's another dimension on that. And I do take the point um, regarding the um, sound insulation and the landscaping along the railway line there. Again, I don't know whether there are possibilities of looking to condition that because we do have problems in other, other areas regarding noise and so on, and we are talking about people's quality of life here. And I'm absolutely sure a reputable company like Law Homes would want to do everything possible to make sure that the, these issues are addressed. And I don't know whether other members of the committee, but if I were to propose, for example, acceptance, that would certainly be something we'd like to look at and see if we could condition it. But the principle is that we'd obviously much rather our officers could work with you to come to a mutually acceptable solution. So there's about 15 questions all in one, some for you and um, some for the planning. What we're looking for is a compromise and common sense to prevail rather than an entrenched view. Thank you. Th 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 thank, you. thank you for your, your, your questions and, and comments there. Um, if I take your second point first, because that's, that's probably easier to, 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 to discuss. Um, we would be content to have a, um, a, a post-survey condition put on there so, again, we can prove... Um, what are the proposals were for in terms of acoustics so we can do uh, some tests and I'm sure Phil can uh, agree some, some wording upon that. That's absolutely fine. Um, something that we, we, we have done, um, which again we, we've, I've talked about with members in, in, in the room, is we've offered um, the, the option of additional PV to those that don't have it as a sales extra. And that, that would be something that we, would, we, we could offer sat here so people then have, have the choice. Um, and again, we've, we've done that successfully at other, other developments. So 
on, on that basis, that's what I could sit here and com commit to you today, that we could, we could offer that as, a, as an extra, so people have the choice. If they want to do that, then that's what they could do. Okay. Councillor Field, did, did you want to come in? Yes, please. Oh, yes. Um, just some clarity. Uh, Solovoltaic cells, I was about to ask you, it says it's proposed that solar voltaic cells on the roofs of housing to be gener to generate electricity will be offered on all open market dwellings. That seems to there seems to be some contrast there between what you've just said and what, and, uh, what we've discussed earlier in the meeting. Uh, my prime concern about conversion kits to enable them to burn hydrogen uh, now allow gas boilers to burn hydrogen. I think you've just made that clear, haven't you? You're saying 2030, so we keep the kits for eight years, and that presumably then moves us to 20% hydrogen, or does that is that the date at which we move to 100% hydrogen? It, sorry, can I, I'll, I'll, I'll come in on that. There's a couple of things. Um, uh, and to think just about the building regulations, you're talking about 19% uplift in our emerging plan, which is not yet approved, um, and the new the building regulations, which are uh, in, been enacted now for enforcement in 2023, I guess they require a 30% uplift, and the new home standard, which is two years later, requires a 70% uplift. So you don't seem to be offering very much there. You're, 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 you're suggesting that you'll have the foundations for a lot of these houses in before 2023, which I think is in about six months' time, isn't it? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, could you make that clear? Um, and the issue about acoustics, again, the report says um, attention is drawn to the need for additional measures to protect residential amenity of, of future occupiers of certain dwellings. Um, and a condition is suggested to ensure additional noise insulation and window specification is provided to those dwellings. I couldn't see anything in the report that says which dwellings that implies to. So is that is that a statement of truth, and is uh, which dwellings will that apply to? Thank you. So I think that's the three issues I have at the moment. Thank you, sir. Um, so if I start with your, the, the, the first the first point about um, the conversations we've had with GTC and Caden and and, and the hydrogen point. Um, Again, we're, we're very much reliant upon them, and, and they have set 2030 as a, a, a blended target point. Because we're, we're not in charge of that, we're, we're just going on what, what we're being told, told, told by them. But they are making uh, vast strides, and if, if, if I don't know, you're, you're particularly interested in, in that, I would look at the, the work that they've, they've done up in Durham, GTC, and, and what they've done over um, uh, in, in very other parts of the country where they are now running 100% hydrogen uh, test um, uh, developments. Um, in terms of the, the acoustics, again, we, we've had a, a full uh, noise report carried out, which has specified the uh, type of ventilation needed for both purge and for trickle ventilation, and also the window specifications for those. Um, that was, I think, submitted as part of the application, but as, as you rightly said, I think there's likely to be a condition within there that we would resubmit that. Um, the houses that that report identifies are the ones that are pretty much adjacent to the railway line, uh, and probably I think it's like two or three houses that, that come sort of north to south on that first road that, that, that comes through. So, so that is identified, it is, it is scoped, um, uh, and that will be subject to a, a discharge of condition application. And then the, what was the third point, sir, sorry. PV, PV. Uh, yeah, sorry. And then sustainability. Um, in, ter in terms of the submission that we've made and the energy report, um, it is as per the officer's um, slide that they've shown, that is what we will be offering as uh, PV. But as already um, identified, we would be happy to commit here today to offering that as a as sales extra so everybody would have the opportunity to, to be able to, do, to, to provide those. 
and the amount of PV that is offered on the houses that were identified in the officer's report is what? One panel per or? No, no, no. So it's, I, again, I don't have the report in front of me, but it would be something circa, circa a, like a one kilowatt system per, per household. But so I, don't, I don't have that. So that, four, that point yeah, 400 pounds worth of panels per household. Okay, thank you. If, can, can I just check? In my briefing, Chairman's briefing, I was actually told you'd already made that offer of offering solar panels to all the houses. That isn't something you're offering new today. That was already, I was told, you'd made, that was already existing. Is that correct? I mean, that was already pre-planned. You had that in the system already. You were going to offer solar to all the other houses that didn't have it included. Um, no, I don't, I don't believe we've made that offer before, but if it is in the papers, then I, I, I yeah. apologise, sir, okay. it's unknown to me, but that's something okay. that we would look to do. Thank you. Chairman, can I just yeah. pop in on this small point? Is, is, is the point that the, the offer is that they're being offered, but they come at a cost? I suspect that's, I, that's certainly my understanding of the situation here, as, a, as an add-on, I think, as, as was described. And, and just for clarity, um, there's a condition on the Outline Planning Commission, and bearing in mind we're dealing with a reserve matters application here, there's a condition in relation to uh, sustainability, uh, and as far as I can see from uh, the file on this, we have advice from uh, environmental health colleagues, and that they are uh, satisfied with the submission provided. So, um, from their perspective, condition 21, I think, of the outline permission has been um, satisfied, um, and I appreciate all the other points in discussion, but just thought it's worthwhile clarifying. That's obviously a condition, and there is an, an application to discharge that condition, which has not yet been determined, but that's not in front of the committee. This is a, re a reserve matters application as we have it, and clearly it's relevant to consider the total scheme. I understand that. Um, but as I understand the internal advice that officers have is that um, the proposal is acceptable. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to the ward members now. Uh, you've got another question for the applicant? Sorry, yeah, can we have a comfort break, please? We can go for two hours. Yeah. I've got actually two more questions to the applicant, very brief, then we'll take that comfort break. Is that all right? Can you just talk about how many triple parking there are, and will the estate be adopted by highways, bearing in mind some of it is brick on road, which they don't like to adopt? Could you just pick up those two points? Yeah, um, absolutely. Just bear with me two seconds. Okay, so there are... On, on, on site, there are no areas with three allocating There are no areas with three allocated parking spaces in front of each other. There are 12 incidents of tandem parking followed by a garage. However, the garages do not count towards the allocated parking provision and instead intended for cycle storage. So there are no true ta triple tandem parking spaces. Just the 12, we have the garage behind it, which don't count as the car park space. So, so, um, yeah, but a garage is for a car. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's over, 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 over provision, if you, if, if you like, the garage space being an additional space. Okay, and the road? Um, in terms of the road, we would be looking to have the main spine road adopted um, and then have uh, areas of, of, of the shared drives, etc., cetera, under, under a management company. Thank you. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll take a quick 10-minute break. We'll come back at 25 to 12 by these clocks. Uh, did, yes, sir. If, if I can, Chair, um, a question for yourself, which is a bit strange. Would it be helpful to explain the location of the preschool? I was aware that it was discussed uh, in your questions earlier. It, would that be helpful for, for members? If not, I apologise, but it, it, I, I can offer perhaps some insights to that if it would be useful. Chair, I, I, I had as much of going as anybody on that. I think the if we've reached a point where the county, which is both the Education Authority and the Highways Authority, are, yeah, I, I think agree. this is the least worst one, then we, I I'm think, not sure I we can explore right. it any further, yeah. can we? I think it's in the papers before us. It's been a, the county's made its view. So, thank you for that. Okay, we'll take a quick 10-minute break. Thank you.
Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Um, so we're going to move on now. Continue on, obviously, with the same application, uh, item 7A, School Road in Elmswell. Uh, unless we had any other questions, uh, I think we'd exhausted the questions to the applicant. We're now going to move on to the ward members. We have two ward members, Councillor Geek and Councillor Mansell. Uh, Councillor Mansell can't be here today, and Councillor Geek is going to read out Councillor Mansell's uh, response, as well as, I'm sure, give your own. So over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a statement from Councillor Mansell. She says she's sorry to that she's unable to attend the committee today, but she's got a meeting that she's unable to move. This site has a long planning history, and we're here today to discuss the reserved matters application for 86 homes. Whatever we think about the suitability of this site for housing, that is now behind us, as the principle of development has already been established with the granting of outline planning permission. Alongside that planning permission, there was a legal agreement and some conditions relating to the provision of a shared use path parallel to School Road from the existing settlement boundary to the almshouses. This shared use path will form part, but only part, of that long-awaited community path between Almshall and Woolpit. As more and more development comes to both villages, the need for this path to be completed is becoming more and more pressing. There are still too many uncertainties about how this path will negotiate the roundabout and cross the A14. While we welcome this section of path beside School Road, it is not at all what our residents expected. SUS transport a strip of land along this length of road over 20 years ago for a cycleway, and although this is currently just a field edge, it provides a pleasant off-road footpath high up from the road. The new shared use path is not going to go up on this bank, but on the same level as the existing narrow pavement. The width of School Road is insufficient for two large vehicles to pass, and HGVs regularly mount the kerb in order to pass each other. Pedestrians have been knocked by wing mirrors, and this is just an, an accident waiting to happen. This new path will, of course, be much wider than the existing pavement, but as it is not up on the bank, users of the path will not feel safe. There is enough land to enable this new path to be grade separated from the road, and we should be taking this opportunity to do this at this time. We should not be satisfied with second best. It is good that Bloor Homes have been engaging well with the community. Um, Sarah says she does not recall ever saying that we did not want a play area on site. I'll, I'll come on to that later. Um, and she says there are a number of pleasing aspects to this development. Many of the houses are orientated to make best use of solar PV and solar gain. The fabric first method of construction is welcome. The bungalows along the eastern edge conserve the amenity of the neighbours along School Avenue. All the homes meet NDSS space standards, and all market dwellings have the offer of solar PV. That being said, there are also a number of things that could make this development more acceptable. EV charging infrastructure for all dwellings, regardless of whether they have an on-plot parking space or not. In fact, it's those dwellings whose parking area is not adjacent to their property who will find it more difficult and costly to fit subsequently, and they don't have the option of using what I gather is known as a granny cable either. Uh, and avoiding the use of gas boilers for all the dwellings would also make it more acceptable. Then finally, there is a position of the preschool. Uh, and Sarah says she's not sure what the best option is. The outline approval indicative plan showed the land for the preschool adjacent to School Road, then it moved to the back of the development, and now it's somewhere in the middle. Until the general population take the desired modal shift in the way they decide to travel, wherever the preschool is, it will cause highways issues. If parents drive their children to the preschool, then they will try to park as close to where they need to go as they can, on pavements, on verges, blocking access. The answer is not to provide more parking to accommodate them, but we do need to ensure that they do not choose to park on School Road near the new junction and the bend. So that is Councillor Mansell's uh, statement. Uh, I would like to echo and support the views of um, Mr Dow from the Parish Council and of Councillor Mansell and add a few points. Firstly, the play area. Uh, we have indeed said in the past that we don't like spreading small amounts of play equipment thinly around 
our villages, and we'd rather invest in better provision in fewer places. But this is a place that could really benefit from play equipment. It's too far from the nearest other provision, and that involves going along busy roads. And there are obvious advantages in having play equipment near to the preschool. So I, I would like to take uh, Bloor Homes up on their, um, their, uh, their offer of having it included. Secondly, the siting of the preschool. Councillor Mansell is right. There is no best place for the preschool to be in order to discourage parking on, on School Road or around the new estate. Where it's currently proposed seems, has seemed to me as good as any other place, although I am also persuaded by Mr Dow's arguments for having it next to the public open space, hopefully including the play area. Thirdly, the affordable housing. Um, as far as I can see in the committee report, page 119, they are all in one place. They are not interspersed with other, um, with, with, um, with market housing. Could they please be spread around a bit more? And then finally, I'd like to come on to transport. Let's start with buses. Um, I'm surprised that there are nine bus stops within a 10 minute walk, which it says in paragraph 4.2, page 23. Um, we wonder whether school bus stops are being included in this list. And anyway, of course, none of these bus stops are any use without an adequate public bus service, and Almswell's bus service can't be described as adequate at present. Footpaths, it's great that the footpath beside the railway is going to be improved. It's lovely that it will link to the permissive path to the east. Um, and finally, uh, to come on to the longer cycle and footpath link between Elmswell and Woolpit, uh, Councillor Mansell and Mr Dow have summarised the problems very well. Um, I'd like to add that the, um, the uh, and we've also had a lot of chat about it, but I'd like to emphasise that the red line area on slide six does appear to show plenty of room for a grade separated path. Uh, as Councillor Mansell points out, that's what's expected locally. It's something that feels like an improved, safer replacement to the edge of the field path, not, not to the pavement, but to the edge of the field path that's informally used as pres at present. Um, as Mr Dow said, it's needed in order to make that new path not only feel, but also be safe to cyclists <coughs> excuse me, and walkers, and indeed to everyone using it. Some of these cyclists and walkers are expected to be primary school children having to make their way from Elmswell to a new school in Woolpit. So we'll potentially have groups of nervous cyclists and walkers who have to be discouraged from, from, from stopping using it and getting back into their cars. We have to, to encourage the, those nervous cyclists to stay with the cycle path. So please could you regard this as the absolute minimum that the residents of Elmswell and Woolpit need? Um, as Mr Dow argued for the cycle path further down um, the hill, once a path has been design, designed, engineered and built, it's hard to improve. If we don't get that good cycle path along School Road first time, we are likely never to get it. Um, in addition, uh, obviously it's clearly essential that we have the ability to run the footpath further down behind the almshouses and the church to the north of the church. Uh, without that, it's very hard to see how that path will ever actually be usable to get all the way to Woolpit. Um, and I wonder if, if Mr Isbell could clarify exactly what the committee is deciding today about the cycle path. Would approving this application today mean that the proposed layout of the foot and cycle path a long school road is set in stone and can't be improved. Now, given that the reserve matters are for appearance, layout, lands landscape and scale, and we have a separate discharge of conditions application for the highways and the cycleway improvement, um, is there a role for that discharge of conditions application to play in ensuring that we get that absolutely essential, usable, safe and trustworthy foot and cycle path? Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Do you want to just come in on the points that's been raised? Uh, thank you, Chairman. So this is a reserve matters application, and within the description, the uh, road winding and cycle footway link are mentioned. The details of that provided here are consistent with the Section 106 provision and uh, what I understand was expected uh, in relation to the outline commission. I have heard from Councillor Mansell and Councillor, uh, well, and, and from County Councillor uh, Mellon, and, in really, and, and indeed um, uh, Mr. Dow, in relation to this question of the siting of the uh, footway cycleway, 
I don't see reference to that as an instruction from committee, from committee in the January 21 uh, minutes. Uh, the comments of the Parish Council previously focused particularly on the improvement question around the junction with School Road, uh, and there, is, there are references there to uh, safety of pedestrians and cyclists throughout. I don't see a particular um, identification of an issue relating to the position of the footway cycleway uh, such that it should be in any particular relationship to the road other than that there should be that provision. Uh, and I don't see uh, particular clarity about that uh, within the section 106. Uh, so uh, throughout all that may have been in the minds of some people. I don't uh, see it necessarily as being in the minds of committee when it made that decision. I have nothing to tell me that. Um, it's also the case that uh, those works are the subject of uh, a discharge of conditions request and there is a section 106 um, uh, provision related to the junction highway improvement works too. But I also see comments from, highway, uh, from the highway authority on both the discharge of condition application that we have, which indicates that what is before us, uh, and not, not here today I should say, but what has been provided in relation to discharge of condition is acceptable, and in relation to this application uh, I understand that to be acceptable too. So what you have as far as I can see is a difference of opinion uh, relating to the adequacy of what is proposed. Uh, and without laboring the point about decide the application in front of you, um, there will always be situations where one could come up with a better scheme, arguably. Um, we are in a situation of having something that is acceptable, and the council's role as planning authority is to decide the question in front of, him, in front of itself uh, as to what is or is not acceptable on the balance of probability. And as far as I can see, the technical advice I have related to the footway cycleway is that it is acceptable. There is a provision in the section 106 that safeguards the long-term position related to the ongoing provision of that footway cycleway. Um, and in any event, this is a development of 86 dwellings. What Councillor Geek, Councillor Mansell and others are referring to appears to me a larger piece of infrastructure related to uh, the uh, circumstance in the village. And doubtless this, as it is, would provide something, but the planning process is supposed to mitigate harm, uh, and uh, from our perspective as officers, that's what this application does at the present point in time. It does not in any way preclude a further revised scheme coming forward to provide a cycleway footpath. I don't necessarily agree that um, once this is delivered, it is the only answer. From my perspective, if there is a better provision that might subsequently come forward, then that, that may be the case. That is a question of funding. And as this scheme is expected to fund the delivery of those works, then clearly what we ask for must be proportioned. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions to the ward members? Yes, Councillor Evan. Um, thank you, Chair. I think this is for the officers, really. The, the reference to the children's play area, so in 6.5 it said um, that it was omitted, but that um, the applicant said they had to have a condition. And in fact, we've got a condition saying details of play space. Um, so will that cover the, if there's already a condition saying details of play space, including equipment specification, that will cover what the ward members are? Um, asking for, as in to have the play equipment put back in again? Yes, as far as I'm aware, um, it might be something that you want to kind of direct towards the, the applicant as well, um, just to get their kind of perspective on it. But yeah, as far as I'm aware, in terms of the condition, that would secure that. Um, thank you for that. And, and also, Chair, may I ask, it, is it possible just with these issues around this footpod, is it? or maybe it's for the planning office, I'm not sure, whether that we can have an informative um, about working to improve the link for the cycling footpath of some sort, just to kind of not, so that, so that this application isn't mean it's the end of it, if you sort of mean. I, I think that's entirely appropriate. I think, I mean, the, the design of the footway cycleway works have been through part, a part and parcel of the section 278 um, agreement that's been already, uh, work through with County Council. I think with this decision, you're perfectly at liberty to do that so that you don't prejudice uh, and make sure that everybody is cited on the potential to keep the door open for future improvements. 
Um, and this is not the only site in Elmswell, I and mean, the District Council has other land in Elmswell which may well come forward, which may well alter the dynamics of how people might move through the area. So all of these things are, you know, there, there is a, a perfectly good reason to add an informative chairman. Can I just come back to say yeah. that could, could, um, could I um, respectfully ask that the um, officers put the wording on that, that um, other than, rather yeah. than and me then try when we come to debate, one of us try and make it up. It up. Thank yeah. you. Okay, uh, any other questions for the ward member? Councillor Matheson. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so, so can I be, I mean, it's, it's deep, deeply frustrating. I think it's a question for, for, for Philip first as well. It's deeply frustrating that we can't see the design. Um, I mean, can we, can we not, I mean, it, I think this is, a, this we, this is where we, we ask for the reserve matters and the section 106 um, condition discharge that's re related to it, the, the, the cycle path, so, you know, to both come forward together. So it's deeply frustrating. We haven't actually got it in front of us as well to see what we're talking about. And I, I now understand. I'm really sorry, but what is the question? Well, the, the, the question, the, the question is, is where, what is the land that was bought 20 years ago by the, the then uh, county councillor, you know, what is, is that land, is that a different strip of land to what's actually being put forward in front of us at the moment as the cycle path beside the, beside School Road? Thank you. Philip. So, um, gentlemen, I don't know if we've got any plans in the presentation we could turn to. Uh, the, the outline permission, you, you will have seen, oh, just if you go back to the outline, if you, right, so, um, <laughs> so you can see there's a long limb of red line that runs down School Road. So that's, that's as far as I understand it, in relation to this application, that was land that was considered potentially available for that purpose. I don't know whether that is the land that was transferred and obtained by Sustrans. I don't have that knowledge here today. However, Sustrans are a party to the Section 106 associated with this, and clearly it was in everybody's minds at the time the Section 106 was entered into to provide an onwards link at the back of the church and the almshouses. The scheme designed for this footway cycleway work, Jasmine, I don't know if we've got anything in the presentation, we can pick that up. is so so there's there are three drawings these these there are three drawings which relate to the section 278 works and they describe both works to the junction and the cycleway footway now you will see Two thirds of the way up that drawing, um, there is an oak tree, and therefore the footway cycleway skirts around that in order to avoid harming the tree. It then returns to the side of the carriageway um, and continues southwards. And to the north, it obviously uh, arrives at and crosses, par I think it's Parnell Lane, is the right of way going off to the farm to the other side of the railway line there. Um, but in essence, you have a, a proposal that is located. Uh, at the at the carriageway edge for uh, what is a already a narrow uh, footway, as you may be aware, and I think this is the the conversation that's been going on. Um, and have we got any better detail than that, Jasmine? Thank you. Yeah. So, in essence, you've got areas which are shown to the left of the blue, which are the um, footway cycleway. I think it's a, a three meter wide. Uh, distance from uh, what I can recall um, and obviously the purple line that you can see purple pecked line coming in at the back of the arms houses is the connection point as far as we know it at this stage um, so so those are the, that that's as much detail as we are sitting on in relation to uh, the scheme at the moment and the question then is how much land is reserved and there is more land reserved for it but we're dealing with the scheme before us today, not some other proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. I think that's helpful. Okay, members, so it's now up to us to discuss, debate, and come to a conclusion on this. Councillor Matheson. 
Well, I, I, I'll, you know, I think I'll go straight on to the, to the, you know, what's been coming out in the last few minutes. And I think we haven't got an understand a section through, so we can see the, 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 the different heights of the of the road and the, and the land, and where the, where the cycle path is is, is to go. Um, and, and I think if you couple that up with, with what Mr. Dow said about the, the, uh, the, the, the width of the road and the two HGVs, and the, the, you, you finish up with a situation where the path, the path that is proposed at the same level as the road is actually going to be the, the overflow of, of when two HGVs can't get past one another, and that raises a big, a big red flag in terms of, of the danger of what's being proposed. So that, that worries me now very, very much, and it's probably not worth declaring, but I was actually a member of Elmswell Parish Council when that land was originally bought uh, for, by Sustrans by the county council, and, and um, I don't think that's worth actually recording, is it? <laughs> But uh, it, it's, it's, it does bring an extra factor into my concern and interest in this particular scheme getting done right. Okay, I uh, just think we need to pick that up, yes. okay? Because you've just, you, so can we just have clarity on that? Because obviously you've been involved talking about an area that you've been very passionate about for the last 15 minutes. So Ian, can we have your comments, please? Can I, 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 I'm switched on now. I mean, all experienced members of this committee know that the, the rules they've had in their training about predetermination and bias, I'm sure Councillor Matheson or any other member would, would be honest about that if it were the case. I, pass it back to you, if, as it were, if it's for you to decide, really. Okay, well, give it some thought. Councillor Eburn, you are next. Um, thank you, Chair. I think, um, you know, w one of the, the good things about this application is there's been a lot of discussion with the local community, with the parish council, with the ward members, and so on, in, in order to try to bring, um, you know, the best that, that they, they can do here today. Um, and at the moment, though, I'm there's several issues that I think fall slightly short. One, one of them is the building regs issue, which I think is very disappointing. Um, given that, that you know any major house builder, I feel should be really um, looking to the building regs that are currently in uh, um, in the legislation as at last Wednesday, and um, you know ensuring that we can get the best they can get the best possible for the residents that are going to be living in their their developments. Um, I also feel that this is that, that this site we're a little bit hostage really to the the highways work. I mean this has come forward quite quickly relative to the outline application being um, agreed. And, you know, it seems that we, that, you know, in order to get the highways work done, it's being kind of slightly pushed through, but that might be just a perception that I've got. But I, there is a concern about, um, you know, and I appreciate that this was sorted at outline permission, but that road going around the corner, school road, I mean, <coughs> the, the times when I have been on it and driving and, and vehicles come at you in the middle of the road coming the other way um, is rather unnerving, to put it mildly, and you do note pedestrians jumping from the path into the field. Um, and so I think to that point, we should be doing everything we can to ensure that the foot and cycle way from that development to other connection points, um, either in the village or to adjacent villages, is undertaken, and we really need to push hard to get that to happen. So I think any help from officers on that front, and I appreciate the help officers have been giving already to this application, um, should be done. So I think, um, you know, Chair, I've got, got a few concerns, the, the building regs, the foot and cycleway connection, and the preschool, I think that's gonna turn into um, Cedars Primary School and that nobody in that development's gonna leave or enter that, um, their home or their, that site in, um, between the hours when the preschool starts and finishes, because it's just going to be a nightmare for parking, but preschool's not what we're discussing today, so hopefully some solution will be found there. So I'm a, on the fence at the moment, Chair, but happy to hear what other members say. Thank you. Councillor Passman. 
Uh, thank you, Matthew. Well, um, having listened very carefully to it, we've had some pretty long discussions, questions and everything else. So, and I might need some help from other members here. Um, so I'm actually going to propose approval, but with um, various additional conditions, informative advisory notes, etc. And that is done in the spirit of cooperation that hopefully common sense will prevail. What we don't want to do is end up with an antagonistic approach here. And I, and I say that because obviously the, um, um, Peter Dow from Ellsworth Parish Council did make comments, I think at the beginning, he was very pleased with the engagement of the officers and so on um, to get to this stage. But um, I think we're all really concerned regarding the building regulations and don't, still don't really understand why it can't be um, that actually we could be looking at the new regulations and using that more extensively. So if we have an advisory note which is done in the spirit of progress and cooperation and common sense, um, an informative advisory note seeing what can be done, what more can be done to adopt the um, latest regulations that have come out. And the same applies, of course, to the, um, the cycleway and the footpath that we've had extensive discussions about. I do really, really hope we can find a solution to that. And I think Philip said earlier, you have a scheme, but there is always room for improvement. That's not to say it is a cast iron guarantee, it's the perfect solution. Well, again, I think following discussions that everybody's had and with board members and so on, I think there is a way forward on that. But it's got to be the ability and willingness of um, the applicant and others to, to work with people to put that forward. I mentioned earlier, this seems about two hours ago, um, the condition regarding the permeability of driveways and hard standing throughout the whole development. So I would like that put in. And again, I don't want to be over prescriptive. Common sense has to prevail, but I think we all know we live in the driest part of the country and therefore we do need to look after our aquifers and not stick it all into some gully and chuck it out into the river and then into the sea because um, that's really, really important in this part of the country, country um, in, in particular. Um, and of course the note in there, I think was it at 6.5 regarding play equipment? I think definitely include that, I think we'd all like to see that. Um, so I am um, obviously looking for a second, but I'm also more than happy to add other things to that in order to move this debate forward, Chairman. So there we are, thank you. Uh, can, I, can I just ask um, Philip around the two-tier housing that's being put on this site, one pre-building regs, one outside the building regs. Is there anything we can do on that to, so that we have a quality across the whole site rather than two-tier housing? Uh, Chairman, I, I understand that situation arises from the sequence of build-out, and obviously it's, it's a cost item as well, so uh, there's, a, there's a timing and cost question related to it. Um, I tend not to like to walk out of committee with uncertainty about what we're trying to achieve with an applicant. Um, one option you have here is to um, you know, adjourn for five minutes to see whether there is any scope for, the, uh, for a discussion with the applicant about the content of that. But don't forget, this is an application for reserve matters, Chairman. Condition 21 is a separate condition which, you know, from, from our perspective as officers, you have advice on. So uh, I think you know, the reality with all of these sites across the district is everybody is, is in a position where there is, there's a moving picture with what's available. Um, you do have the ability to, as a committee, instruct me to do something. I'd always look for a bit of certainty, and it would be useful to have had the opportunity to explore that with an applicant before advising you further. So my own advice would be, if you do want to go down that route, uh, I'd, I'd ask for an adjournment for five minutes just to, to talk through the possibilities with the applicant and to see where that stands, because ultimately that's not a reserve matter here, that's um, a, a detail elsewhere. Yeah, um, I mean, thank you for that. I mean, we, we have deferred applications in the past when we've, when we've been in positions where, we, where we've been up against uh, similar with a, I can't remember the name of the applicant from, it was down in, just on the edge of the A14. Anyway, um, but we don't need, what you're saying is, uh, my view would be it's worth deferring, it's worth uh, giving Philip five minutes to talk to the applicant and see if we can move anything forward, if other members are happy with that. Um, should we just run through the other points first and just check there isn't anything else I'm missing that we might want to throw into that discussion? Uh, Councillor Field, you were next. Yes, I, I think there are two, two issues here that I'm really unhappy about uh, and uh, which deferment could be a solution perhaps. For, 
one of them we we're just talking about the the, the building regulations the the issue that uh, it seems contrived to try and put half the foundations in bef before we get a change in the building standards that are required um, whether one's actually going to get that number of houses the foundations put in before June next year and we are talking about just June next year as the country heads into recession um, I, I would have some doubts but nevertheless uh, I'm looking for some certainty that all these houses will be built to the same standard we have had some movement on on solar PV which it seems to me sensible but the second major issue is this one of the footpath of the cycleway it, 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 there seem areas of uncertainty there and I just cannot see why there's areas of uncertainty surely to God we know which land Sustrans owns um, we, we could make some engineering judgments some cost judgments about uh, putting the the, the footway or uh, the cycleway on that land rather than where it is currently proposed. Clearly the northern portion of, of it at the moment is, is sensibly spaced from the road but the point down the main length of uh, school road is not. And it just seems impossible to me that we're in a position that we cannot sort out those sort of quite minor problems. We can put in um, advisory notes uh, but you know, they're purely advisory and, and the Councillor Parsons has talked about common sense prevailing. Uh, yeah, I agree with him, but common sense does not seem to prevail. So personally, I'm profoundly unhappy with going ahead as this is at the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, just a couple more speakers, then we'll adjourn for five minutes so Philip can have those discussions. Councillor Matheson. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. First to say, I mean, I, what I'm suffering from is not not predetermination. It's it's frustration, really. It, the it, the when when we started a couple of years ago arguing um, that that we wanted um, we wanted the the discharges and some of the conditions to come forward concurrently. That was the new word of the day then. Concurrently, um, I I mistakenly assume that that would mean that we would be able to see what the what the, the proposals were to discharge the condition uh, when we were discussing the main event i.e now um, and and here we are not in that in that position and um, I, mean, I mean I think the you know it's it's a broader point than just just the um, the, the land ownership it's also the, the as I said the height differential uh, that, that Councillor Geek has referred to, and, and I think that's an additional frustration that, that we really ought to see what is proposed and, and indeed what could be the case um, instead of what's in front of us um, on, on a future occasion, as, as Mr Isbell has, has said. Thank you. And Councillor Williams, did you want to add anything before we adjourn for five minutes? No. So we'll adjourn just for five minutes. Um, I suggest we don't if we can stay here, but just give Philip five minutes to talk to the applicant. Chair, Chairman, can I just clarify what I'm, what I'm doing here? So let me just take you back to the cycleway footway. So the scheme as is, and Jasmine, as, as, as you showed uh, on the slides, has been through safety audit and was part of the section 106. So what the applicant has provided there was what officers went away and secured in consultation with the County Highway Authority following the committee minute. The committee minute does not talk about a separated cycleway footway, it talks, away, talks about cycleway footway and the application site, you had an outline, you, 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 you had that, that, that broad area. What was, uh, what was put forward and what was acceptable and what is acceptable to County Highway Authority was uh, a, a, a footway cycleway with, uh, I think, raised curbing to the uh, side of the carriageway. Um, this conversation was part of the discussion that was had on site. The technical advice you have before you as a committee is that what is before you is acceptable. Sorry, I'm going to go back to the question which I, I, I usually say, answer the question in front of you, is the scheme acceptable? It's not, is there a better scheme out there? Is, is the scheme in front of you on the balance of probability acceptable? That's the question the planning authority 
should be putting to itself when it looks at things like this. There will always be situations where one could design a better scheme. The applicants, for their part, have designed a scheme which follows the outline planning permission in the section 106. So what you have before you today does not surprise me because that's kind of where I was expecting it to be. What I'm sensing about what was expected locally does not form part of the committee minute that I read and you know, to that extent, what am, I, what am I seeking to secure in having a conversation with the applicant is, is my problem here. I can talk to the applicant about building regs sides of things, but it's I'm not... The building regs, I think, is the side you're talking about. The rest is not up for discussion. It's what, because it is what's before us, and, and it's, as you've just very eloquently explained. So, you know, that's not for us for to discuss now, because this has come out of a previous meeting and what was requested. So, five minutes, please.
Okay, so welcome back. Thank you for the adjournment, just to give the opportunity for Philip Isbell to talk to the applicant. And do you want to report back, please? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes. So, a number of points came out of Councillor Passmore's uh, comments and requests and from Councillor Matheson and, and others regarding the, um, uh, the scheme before you today. Um, I think it's fair to say we are uh, trespassing on matters that are subject to conditions, but I think in the circumstances, this is about the totality of the scheme you're interested in. Can I take this in reverse order, please, Chairman, and, and, and start off with the cycleway footway? Because when I left the room before that, I did say the cycleway footway was a detail that was set out in the outline. Um, it's uh, described uh, within the section 106. Uh, there is no scope, I believe, to negotiate uh, a revised location of that to the top of the bank. I don't think that's got anywhere for me to take as a, as a matter. You know, the, the, the reserve matters you have for that, as far as they sit within what's proposed, are, uh, as I often say, what they are, um, and they are acceptable to the highway authority. I realise that other people think differently. Uh, I have no engineering advice, and, and the whole scheme has been looked at by, to be honest, uh, highway engineers at the County Council, uh, independent highway engineers doing a safety audit of it, uh, the applicant's own highway engineers, there have been a lot, of, uh, a lot of professional time spent on that um, improvement and cycleway uh, arrangement. I, I, I think, from my perspective, we as officers recommend it in its present format, and I'll leave that matter there. So then, coming to the other matters, Councillor Passwell talked about permeability. Um, as I understand it, there uh, is a scheme uh, for sustainable drainage which is sitting with, uh, has been commented on by the Flood Authority, who are very happy with what's presently put forward. Um, there is a question of ground conditions and the ability of the ground to actually accept flows, but subject, the, subject to uh, a, a condition that allows us to manage, manage that reasonably, Chairman, uh, we, can, uh, we can include uh, an expectation on this that um, the, in the inclusion of permeability is, is a, an agreed uh, item. So I think that's uh, appropriate as, a, as a, um, an informative chairman. I mean, the Flood Authority will ultimately have some say in this, but it comes back to ground conditions. Uh, so I'd recommend an informative for that. Uh, the play equipment, the scheme has had various thoughts about play, play equipment over time. Uh, can I also suggest, bearing in mind that that already has a section 106 behind it to uh, secure the open space and it's part of that, that this is uh, the subject of another informative whereby that's to a specification which um, is uh, agreed between uh, ourselves, the applicant and the parish council so that we have some common sense about what, what that standard of equipment is. So uh, two informatives uh, would be part of my recommendation to you to deal with both play equipment and the permeability question. Uh, and then there was the question of building regulations. Now, at the moment, as I understand things, we have 47 units offered with PV, uh, which includes eight affordable units. Uh, the applicants look further at that, and I think from their perspective, uh, they, they think they can achieve 100% provision of... of um, PV on all of the plots where that's reasonably practical by reason of orientation. And my recommendation committee would be that uh, there's effectively uh, an informative uh, and an instruction to myself as chief planning officer to deal with this as a separate matter under condition 21. So condition 21 is the sustainable uh, sustainability condition. I think I did mention earlier that that was already in an acceptable format. Um, and what we uh, have discussed has been the applicant putting in a revised proposal which includes uh, solar PV on all, on all plots where that's reasonably practicable um, uh, and that's basically down to orientation of plots and that we'll deal with that uh, under uh, condition 2021 20, outside of uh, committee. The other point I suppose that I, I, I would um, pick up in relation to the footway cycleway and the risk to um, people passing along that and the uh, potential for people to be um, uh, hit by vehicles passing along uh, the route or by vehicles crossing the curb. I, I think by estimation, the curb as it presently exists is probably uh, not as high as it will be once the works are carried out. Uh, I think it's fair to say you're going to have a three metre wide footway and cycleway. Uh, and you know, once 
uh, the works are completed, you will have a curb which will be a uh, technical standard of 125 mils high. I think by anecdote, the current estimation is that in places it's about 75 millimetres high. So there will be some increased measure of natural protection by reason of that to keep traffic separate and uh, away from cyclists and um, foot passengers on the cycleway footway. But as I say, with that, I, I have very little space to go anywhere because the planning authority is in receipt of what was expected. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Oh, look, I mean, that at least gives clarity around some of the concerns. We're never going to be able to cover all of them as a committee, but um, you know, that was definitely worth having that adjournment to give you that opportunity. So thank you, and thank you um, to you guys as well for having those discussions. Councillor Passmore, back to you, because so far you've proposed it. Are you happy that we put in those those key points? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm perfectly happy um, with that, and I think that's, that is a step forward, and I think that should be appreciated, so I certainly appreciate it okay. as a proposal of this. One other thing I didn't mention, but we did talk, I think, earlier about um, landscaping along the railway line, but I um, can't imagine that would be a difficulty, just yeah. to make sure that that um, does meet the expectations of the committee, but that, again, the officers have already got that, so think that would cover it, but if that could okay. just be specifically and mentioned. Do I have a seconder for that? Well, I'll second it. I don't normally propose or second. I'll second it. Um, anyone else wish to speak or we'll go to the vote at this stage? We'll go to the vote. Okay, we'll go to the vote. Can you just remind us? as much as you need to on what we're being asked. I have amended... Well, well we've got that. I think you have just been through the four yeah. points and, we, and it's, we've, just, we've just had it read out. So I think we're all very clear on what we're being asked. Okay, members, that vote is now in progress. Four. Four. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Matheson, would you like me to take yeah, the vote verbally? Yeah, I, I, it's telling me I need to log on and I can't see Okay, so how would board. you like to vote? Um, right, yeah, I, I, I'm voting against. Thank you. We've got two more. Yeah. Councillor Wellam, are you okay or would you like me to take your vote? Mm -hmm. Councillor Wellam? Thank you, Chair. That is four votes for and two against. Okay. That's carried. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Right. We now move on. And sorry to keep you uh, at the back row there. Sorry it's taken as long. I realise you've been here for three hours waiting, so I apologise. But we'll move swiftly on to that item 7B. And we'll just ask you to move seats, any speakers that need to come forward. Okay, folks, we're going to move straight on to the next item, which is, as I said, agenda item 7B, uh, in part in Mendlesham and part in Palgrave. The line actually goes right through the centre of the site. Uh, and I'll now hand over to Alex Scott, who will take us through the application. Alex. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, members, this is item 7B, as the uh, Chairman's explained. Application reference DC21 forward slash 04476. Um, the application seeks outline planning permission with all matters reserved apart from access 
for the erection of 14 dwellings and a mix of two, three and four bedroom uh, dwellings is proposed. Uh, the site is at uh, land at Norwich Ro Road, uh, Weathering Set, Cam Brockford, at uh, the settlement uh, Brockford Street on the A140. And as this Chems explained, part of the site uh, lies within the parish um, of uh, Stoke Ash and Thwaite, as well as uh, Weathering Set, uh, Cam Brockford. And I've got a, uh, a map uh, showing that. Uh, I'll come to that in a second. So the application uh, follows an extant uh, planning permission on the site for nine dwellings, reference uh, DC forward slash 20 uh, 00324, and this was granted in October of 2020 by your officers and uh, delegated authority. And the current proposal is uh, therefore for an increase of uh, five dwellings uh, further to that uh, extant uh, planning permission in effect. Now, there is no proposal uh, for on-site delivery of affordable housing as part of the proposal. And uh, a viability assessment has been provided as part of the application, uh, which has been uh, assessed and agreed by the uh, District Valuer Service um, as a request from your officers, um, as paid for by the applicant. And uh, further elaboration of this point is provided uh, to you in um, uh, section uh, 13 of the officer report. So I'll just move on to the presentation. So this is the location of Brockford Street within the district and the approximate location of the site within the immediate area. And this is the, an aerial view of the wider area setting of the site and settlement and an aerial view of the site and its immediate uh, surroundings. The uh, site is edged in red on the plan there. And onto the uh, constraints map. Um, now the site lies outside of the uh, settlement boundary, which is uh, shown in, edged in green here. That is from the uh, 1998 local plan. But it's worth bearing in mind that that um, does denote that the settlement of Brockford Street specifically is a countryside village. So notwithstanding the fact that it's outside Brockford Street, we still uh, view in the, in the same way as sites outside the settlement boundary as per um, um, core strategy policies uh, CS1 and CS2. Um, now the uh, public right of way Public footpath um, number six runs past the rear of the site here, and um, that is said to be a, a bridleway um, by uh, Suffolk County Council public right of way as well. Um, and several Grade Two listed buildings are within the historic core of the village, uh, but those are uh, a significant distance away with intervening housing development. Um, in the order of 80 meters, I think the nearest one is to the south of the site. So there wasn't too much concern about uh, an impact on setting and si significance raised by um, your heritage officers uh, when they were consulted. Now, um, the dotted line, which hopefully you can see there through the site, that is the, uh, that is the parish boundary. So anything to the north is in Stoke Ash and Thwaite, anything to the south, uh, whether except Camp Rockford Parish. And this is the red line site location plan provided with, uh, with the application. And this is the latest uh, proposed access plan. Uh, now this has been provided recently by the applicant and it follows the um, comments received from uh, county highways. So this has been uh, submitted um, in an effort to address those concerns. Um, but. Uh, we have not yet received the, um, the comments of uh, County Highways uh, specifically on this, on this proposal for the meeting today, so um, apologies for that. And this is the uh, indicative layout as proposed. Now, uh, matters of layout are um, uh, currently reserved. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is, this is indicative, but essentially, um, 
what is proposed is uh, uh, the majority of the dwellings fronting the highway would be uh, three bedroom dwellings um, with one two bedroom dwelling uh, to the very south. You then have the uh, two uh, semi-detached properties as two bedroom dwellings, um, then another uh, semi-detached pair of three bedroom dwellings and the four bedroom dwellings um, detached would be at, at the back. But um, yeah, indicative um, as, uh, as is currently proposed. Now on the screen here we have, uh, on the left is what's currently proposed and on the right is what um, has already got planning permission uh, for nine on the site, just uh, for comparison. Um, bearing in mind that the current proposal, the, the layout is currently reserved so that, you know, that could potentially change um, in, in, in any event. Um, but essentially the, uh, the dwellings which are closest to the A140 would essentially be uh, the same, the same design and provision. Um, that's a point worth picking up, I think. Um, onto some photographs. Now, this is um, looking across the frontage of the site, um, south uh, into Rockford Street Village, and this is turning slightly to the right, um, looking again towards the village, and there is uh, further housing behind this existing tree screening, and this is the main road uh, going through the settlement, and we note the uh, 30 mile an hour speed limit. And this is uh, looking north, uh, away from the village, and um, you'll probably be able to see the um, petrol station and uh, services, which are um, in close proximity to the site, and um, there is actually a uh, intervening dwelling here at, uh, at Ashley, um, which um, neighbours the site. And this is the uh, state of the site at the moment. And uh, what is being constructed is um, the extant planning permission. So uh, that's, uh, that's as your officers understand. And then just a uh, photograph there of the interior of the site. Now, in terms of your uh, officer's recommendation, the recommendation is uh, for, um, for refusal. And uh, that is on the basis of um, the 9.5 for year's housing land supply the council is currently um, able to demonstrate and it's your officer's uh, assessment that um, the objectives of the MPPF paragraph um, 60 are being uh, are being met by um, by our uh, current housing delivery and uh, we're now in much uh, better position uh, to implement the purpose of the development plan um, to manage the delivery of new housing development um, to more rather than less uh, sustainable locations. Um, now, the site is not considered uh, to be um, sustainable um, and uh, for the following reasons as set out in the report, um, but just briefly, um, inadequate uh, access to a full range of uh, local services and facilities um, <coughs> by means of um, alternative modes of transport, uh, walking, cycling, and, um, and bus connections. There would be a significant reliance on the private motor vehicle as the principal mode of transport to access uh, service and services and facilities, the majority of which are a significant distance from the proposal site in Stowmarket, Dis, or Ipswich. Um, it's not considered to be uh, there's no public benefit in terms of affordable housing, as uh, none is um, uh, being proposed to be delivered on the site. And um, yeah, the benefits of five additional open market housing is considered to be uh, minimal, having considered our current uh, housing land supply position. And also there is uh, not considered to be any uh, significant uh, economic benefits as a result of the proposal um, in the planning balance there. And there is a second uh, reason for a refusal uh, proposed uh, in terms of um, inadequate information in terms of flood risk and uh, for members' information there's uh, further elaboration provided by the local lead flood authority in the table papers and um, there's, there is more information required in terms of flood risk assessment and infiltration results. So we're not uh, quite 
there yet and we need that further information so that is um, a further reason for refusal um, absence of information thank you John okay thank you very much uh, questions Yes, Councillor Parsons. Yeah, thanks. So I just asked Alex, I mean, the original application was granted for nine, and um, the front three or four houses are getting almost complete now because it's uh, very close to the garage, you say. But was there ever a, an anticipation or any discussions regarding putting in for nine and then having another five onto it at a later date, do you know, just as a matter of interest? Well, um, the... Yeah, I'm a sort of at a disadvantage, really. The previous one for nine was a, uh, a, ca a different case officer, and she's not no longer with the authority. Um, but um, yes, there was no um, specific preamp on this. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, not, I'm certainly not trying to catch you at the, the, the point I'm asking this is because, of course, if you give permission for nine, and it is in a 30 limit, as you say, in, but next to the garage, but of course, then adding another five on there could create problems. But also, um, is this a way of trying to avoid the affordable? Uh, can I, we've got to be very careful. We're not in debate yeah, now, no, it's just questions. I'm yeah, immediately yeah. come to the question, I'll get that. But the affordable housing, how does that work if you have a nine plus five as opposed to 14 in the first place? Um, well, because of the size of the site, there was a requirement for affordable housing on the nine anyway. Um, and viability was undertaken for that application as well, as I understand. Um, so you've, you've, you've had two applications, um, one for nine, one for 14. They've both been tested by viability. Um, yeah, they've both come back. It's, it's Unfortunately, it's not uh, seen as viable to secure even one um, affordable housing on the site. There is a residual, but uh, yeah. Any other questions at all? No? Okay. So we'll move on. So next we have the applicant. We have Paul Fox and Chris Collins. We don't have the Parish Council an objector or supporter, so we'll go straight to the applicant. So over to you. And you have three minutes. Um, and if you can, keep to that three minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. I'm here on behalf of Pride Homes in respect to the application at Mearview in Brockford. Firstly, I'd like to mention that throughout the course of this application, Pride have not received any negative feedback from the district and was in fact actively supported into the committee report published last week. Therefore, I'd like to take this opportunity to address some of the concerns raised. Firstly, environmental harm. Having as little impact on the environment and actively supporting its protection and growth is something which is very important to Pride Homes. You can see this through the design and inclusions within the development, such as Salem Live roofs on the garages, solar panels on each dwelling, air source heat pumps throughout, and bird and bee boxes and brick bricks. Through the inclusion of five further dwellings on the development, it will increase the living grass roofs by 135 square metres and Pride plan on constructing a wildlife lagoon, hence the name Mere View, in the centre of the site, which will act as a wet, wet area for nature, along with further bird and bee bricks. The transport links. By the case officer's own comments, there is a bus stop which exists to the south of the site, which offers daily services to Dis, I and Ipswich. The case officer states that this, that occupiers would not be reliant on private cars and would allow them to utilise the bus route for employment opportunities. The precedent has been set here. Sustainable transport was not an issue when planning was passed on the site for nine dwellings, and the same scenario will exist for 14. Furthermore, Pride Homes have been working with the Public Right of Way Officer to construct a new access bridge from the site and upgrade an existing public footpath along the River Dove, which will run from the site to Brockford Green and into Weathering Set, which has further services and schooling. Overdeveloping. As the case officer's comments, the proposed density for 14 homes is acceptable within planning policy. The permission for nine dwellings is actually underdeveloping the site and is not making the best use of the land. A further five dwellings will be contributing to Mid-Suffolk's housing delivery numbers whilst not using any further land within the district. On this, the district is currently claiming in excess of nine years' worth of housing land supply in the emerging local plan. A large proportion of this land has been allocated that has no active application nor any evidence that these sites will be brought forward, given the uncertainty in the world and potentially worsening marketing condi conditions. For this reason, we would urge the district to consider the definite benefits which this application could bring to the local community in the short term. Potentially five additional families living in the village, providing further trade to nearby services, local pubs and shops, not to mention the jobs created through the constru construction of the dwellings, all whilst not taking up any further land in the district. The risk of flooding, a revised flood report has been submitted as part of our application, which shows there is no reason to refuse. This report has yet to be re reviewed or commented on. Now, Pride Homes aren't a large corporate house builder. They're a locally owned father and son team who feels that every development they do must positively contribute to the community around them. They believe they can achieve this by increasing the number of dwellings and provide families with the opportunity to live in an environmentally friendly home that has access to wider facilities and services. I would urge the committee to reconsider the recommendation for refusal and see the positives for increasing the number of dwellings on a largely underdeveloped site. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
uh, questions for the applicant. I've just got a question. I'm not sure if it's for the applicant or for the case officer. Could you just talk about the insufficient flood risk information that's been provided and where we are with that? Um, well, Chairman, that is uh, set out by the lead local flood authority in the, uh, in the table. Uh, that, that's still the case. That, it, that is quite recent. Yes. Yeah, so yes. can I just ask the applicant why we haven't had the flood risk and surface water treatment that's required for an application? We have submitted a revised uh, flood, re flood report um, end of May for, to Alex um, to be reviewed. So that does, that does show the site does drain away <coughs> and it's sustainable. There's no risk of flood. That hasn't been to, has that been signed off by SCC yet? Floods Risk Authority? Um, yes, I mean, the applicant's quite right. We did receive a uh, revised report in May. Um, however, latest comments from uh, SEC are still lacking, so uh, we need a bit more um, from them. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant at all? Yeah. Sorry, you. Only if it's answering the question I asked. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add on to that flood report. Obviously, that's quite easy just to have a condition that we can produce more information uh, regarding that. <coughs> Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so we'll move on to the ward members. Now we have two ward members, so I'd better do it alphabetically. Uh, so Councillor Byrne first. Um, I should like to offer the following comments for the committee. I represent the parish of Stoke Ash and Thwaite, which includes the northern half of the site. Councillor Stringer is the ward member for the southern half, which is the parish of Wetheringset, Cumbrockford, it was Councillor Stringer who asked for the application to be determined by committee. I think I understand his reasoning for doing so, but I disagree with his assessment that the proposed development is in a sustainable location. I'm pleased to see, pleased to see that the case officer's view on this is in accordance with mine. Fourteen dwellings on this site would indeed be overdevelopment, as both parish councils have observed. There is a significant difference between that number and the nine dwellings for which the site was granted permission in 2020, as explained in paragraph 3.1 of the committee report. The relationship of the current proposal to the emerging weathering set neighbourhood plan, as outlined in paragraph 3.2, also has relevance. I have no doubt that the officer's recommendation for refusal is a sound one, and if the committee members are minded to support it, I'm sure they can do so with confidence. And then from Councillor Andrew Stringer, uh, I wanted to explain, sorry I'm not able to attend to tomorrow's meeting, obviously sent yesterday, and could I please uh, read these thoughts circulated to committee. I want to take this opportunity to explain my reasons for the call-in. Councillor Stringer goes on to say, this site is unique in many ways. Notably, it straddles the border of two wards, Ahead of the call-in, I had spoken with Councillor Byrne, informing him I would be seeking a call-in. It is noteworthy that both parish councils recommend refusal of this application, although for differing reasons. The parish of Wetheringset have limited sites planned for housing in the upcoming joint local plan. This site is a site that Mid Suffolk has put in our draft plan, and it is the biggest site proposed in Wetheringset come Brockford. But as yet, the soundness of this is yet to be tested by the inspector. The site does tick some of the boxes needed for sustainability, convenience shop and on a bus route, etc. But wider employment opportunities, village hall and education and spiritual centres are remote from this location without a footpath network that connects. Two further reasons in this case, in my opinion, would point to refusal as being the most appropriate conclusion. The first is the avoidance of, a contributing, sorry, avoidance of contributing to affordable housing. Small settlements such as Brockford and Stoke Ash have little opportunity to take forward affordable housing schemes. So when land sufficient to bring this much needed affordable housing comes forward, then to contrive an application to avoid affordable housing contributions strikes at the heart of making this current application unsustainable. The second reason for me is the huge amount of area designed to accommodate parking and manoeuvring the motor car. This current design appears to be basically a car park surrounded by a ribbon of housing, 
with little or no thought for, into how sustainable methods of transport are being encouraged. Thank you for taking the time to hear my thoughts, and that's from Andrew Stringer, the District Councillor for the Mendelssohn Award. So, members, that's all the information before us. Up to us to discuss, debate, and come to a conclusion. Councillor Field, you want to go first? Yes, I, I gather from that that uh, Councillor Stringer is against uh, the uh, application. Uh, the officers recommend refusal, and so does the other ward member. So I have some difficulty in seeing why we would take a different view to that. I would uh, move that we accept the officer's recommendation and refuse. Is that a proposal or just a thought? That was a proposal. Anyone else want to go? Yes, Councillor Matheson. The, um, the, the, the viability point is interesting. It, it, it seems to me that the, the point about community infrastructure levy, which presumably is, is applicable on this site, that part of the purpose of that was to drive, um, to drive development to, to the places where it could best be built um, uh, in cost terms, uh, which would then allow the, the, uh, the council's affordable housing policies to to deliver, um, and yet we're told the viability here falls below one one property. Um, so, even with 14 on the site, so uh, it it does it seems like it's the wrong site somehow or other. Um, and um, so, I mean, I think I uh, I'm tending to agree with the, with the officers on that. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to second it yet. I've got some thoughts, but no one else has got a hand up. Yes, Councillor Wellham. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just very quickly, um, I don't consider it to be particularly safe crossing the A140 to get on a bus the other side, um, so I would doubt the sustainability. It's not also not particularly safe to walk along even a, a, a footway alongside the, a, the A140, so um, yeah, I'm concerned about that. The, the, the layout, I know it's only... It's only outlined, but work has already started. So, so some bits of it appear to be already sort of set in concrete, so to speak. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, at all happy with the layout, nor the safety in terms of sustainability, so, and sustainable transport. So I, I would probably veer towards um, uh, voting for refusal. I'd like to listen to others, though. Yeah. Well, I, d I don't think I'm able to, able to support it um, at, at this stage, so I'm going to second the motion because we do need to have the drainage and flood risk assessment up front. We can't assess it without it being there, even if it's in the system. Um, and, and the other thing is that um, I'm not very keen on the fact that if you've already had nine and then you want to stick another five in, we've spoken about affordable housing, and I think we've got to be very careful. We do need to have a degree of consistency. There are always exceptions, but looking at this application, um, I do think that need, needs to be addressed, and I don't think this application in its current form addresses it, and we have to look at what we've got here. Um, and I am also genuinely concerned going on the A140, living uh, just up the road nearly every day, the traffic coming out of the site with more, more vehicles, if they want to turn right heading north, there's all sorts of complications potentially there with people turning left and right into the garage um, that may not be, strictly speaking, on the application here, but I do know that from personal experience since 1982, that is a major issue there, and we do get shunts, and I'm not sure that yet another turning, which is literally but one place next door to the garage, has helped particularly for those who are going to be travelling northwards, in other words, turning across the um, two lanes of traffic to head off. So that's my view. Thanks. Okay, I mean, it's interesting this one because when I first read the papers, I couldn't really see why, you know, I struggled to some degree as to what the difference really would be between nine and a few more I felt actually on the site it probably could take it. But having actually heard the case officer, listened to the ward members and obviously heard today's presentation, I do come down in favour of refusal as well. 
Um, and also, I think, you know, we all know that you've got to have the, the, the clear, you know, the, the county council has a clear role now in terms of flood response and giving feedback on that. So with insufficient flood information, that is a big issue. But the sustainable location, I think, has been proven today to me to be another reason for refusal. So I'll, I'll also be supporting the officer's recommendation. So on that basis, we'll go to a vote. Yes. Sorry, Chair, just yeah. to, to jump in there. There was just a couple of very minor tweaks to the recommendation just, just before you moved to the vote, if that was all right. It, I mean, particularly minor. It's that we prefer to a new dwelling rather than the new dwellings. Um, and again, we put one rather than these. So just very Sorry. minor. So stuff. can you just... Yeah, of course. So uh, at the beginning, um, we've had the, we put the proposals in the countryside with the development of a new dwelling. And it, I think that should be the new dwellings because there are five, not, not one. Oh, yeah, this is the a, new a dwellings. Very minor moment. And then towards the end... Um, it's considered that in the circumstances of this application, the direction of new housing development to more sustainable locations is of greater weight than the delivery of one. It should be these additional dwellings. So just to bear in mind that fine. we had put one yep. rather than the five yep. recognised. So just that tweak. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so I'll hand over to you for the vote, please. And Thank you, Chair. Members, that vote is now in progress. Chair, can I take your vote? Yes, so four. Four refusals. Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Matheson, are you able to vote or do you want me to yeah, take it verbally? I'm, I'm mostly getting all going. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Members Chair. If there are only five members here now, that is five votes for refusal, so that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, thank you very much. So, final agenda items, agenda item eight, site inspections. Do any site inspection requests need to be reported to the committee? No, Chair. Okay, great. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for, and again, sorry to kept you so long for that, uh, for the whole morning. Thanks, everyone. Let me close the meeting at one o'clock.